our meeting to order. In and accordance with the open meeting, meeting law, the only board three states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Uh, please rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. And welcome uh, our guests here this evening and those on the cable. Uh, to go all the way through the project. $53,000. Is anyone here for public comment? Then we'll proceed with the budget hearings. First one is the Community Planning Commission. Who's kicking this off? Here. Yes, that's fine. This past year, in addition to its usual permitting activity, the CPC supported the Economic Development Committee's efforts in selling and planning for redevelopment of the former JT Berry property. We applied for and received a $15,000 technical assistance grant from DHCD's uh, PATH program to create the town's first affordable housing production plan, which currently is underway. Uh, the study will include a section focusing on the housing needs of seniors. We have worked with the Metro North Housing Ser Regional Housing Services Office, which continues to monitor and keep records of the town's affordable housing stock and looks for opportunities to preserve affordable housing and create new affordable units. We've continued our efforts to implement recommendations from the 2016 MAPC Short-Term Economic Development Strategy for Route 28 Main Street, um, including obtaining town meeting funds to study a wastewater treatment package plant for strategic areas of Main Street. The RFP for this project is under development and will be issued shortly. We began work with MAPC on two transportation studies, one focusing on improving the region's access to jobs, the other to identify power transit solutions for North Reading. After working with the Board of Selectmen to create the town's complete streets policy, we obtained a $49,000 grant from the state to create a prioritization plan, which is a prerequisite to eligibility for complete streets construction funds. <coughs> this work is underway and is expected to be complete this spring with a goal of requesting construction fund funds from MassDOT in early FY18. Our objectives for the coming fiscal year are as follows. Uh, continued administrative support uh, of the EDC with focus on the sale and redevelopment of 102 and 104 Lowell Road as well as possible implementation of recommendations from the Main Street Planning Studies and the EDSAT report completed in 2015. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. if I may. Can you either, I don't know if it'll come across louder oh. talking into the mic or not, uh, but some people cannot hear okay. what you're saying. Is it better if I talk into the mic or just I don't. It doesn't seem to make a difference okay. that way. So I'll speak. Just, I'll just talk louder. 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 Sure. It's, louder. it's slower. <laughs> Loud and slow, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Our objectives for the coming fiscal year are as follows. Continued administrative support of the EDC with a focus on the sale and redevelopment of 102 and 104 Lowell Road, as well as possible implementations of uh, recommendations from the Main Street Planning Studies and the EDSAT report completed in 2015. Follow up on recommendations with MassDOT for streetscape improvements and complete streets redesign for Route 28 from the Mass Downtown's initiative project completed in 2015. To apply for complete streets construction funds for projects identified um, <coughs> in the town's prioritization plan, which is currently being developed. To initiate implementation of recommendations from the housing production plan once, uh, once it's completed in June 2017. To initiate implementation of recommendations from the Main Street Wastewater Package Treatment Plant Feasibility Study, anticipated to be complete this summer. To continue supporting the town administration in its exploration of transportation improvements, including power transit service alternatives, uh, to increase access for residents who cannot drive, and to promote economic development. And to initiate implementation of recommendations from the two transportation studies being done in FY 2017. To continue working with the Regional Housing Services Office to maintain good records of affordable housing in town and to plan for how to meet the town's affordable housing needs and actively manage their inventory. And if funded through a town meeting warrant article in June to initiate a master plan update incorporating substantial work expected to be completed in transportation, housing, and economic development studies. The town's last master plan was completed in 20, uh, 2004. Master plans are recommended to be updated every 10 years. And 
the following line items are proposed uh, to increase from our budget uh, for the following reasons. Um, advertising, uh, we proposed a $400 increase because zoning amendments typically cost the CPC approximately $200 a piece to advertise, and there are several possible zoning amendments anticipated, including, oh, sorry, <laughs> including um, amendments <coughs> related to the highway business, uh, zoning district, or Main Street, um, a signage bylaw, uh, recreational marijuana, depending on the outcome of the special town meeting, um, changes to the industrial office zoning district, which the CPC has been developing for the past year, and other zoning changes that may come about as a result of recommendations from the housing production plan and possible master planning work. Um, <clears throat> the other item that's proposed for an increase is professional services other, a $472 um, increase to, uh, in order to accommodate the estimated uh, costs of membership for the regional housing services office um, to $10,900. Those are the only two changes in our budget. I can answer any questions. Thank you. I'm surprised it's so low. I thought you would ask for more. Well, um, because we are anticipating coming to town meeting with a warrant article for a master plan. Um, if we do get that, that will be very substantial work on our part. So in terms of planning for additional projects, I know in the past we have asked for economic development funds for specific projects. I think given the work with the EDC now, um, including the development of the JT Berry properties, that's also a pretty substantial project. So we, we didn't have additional economic development related projects in the pipeline other than those two which are which are really pretty large items. Danielle, uh, do you have an estimate of what you're going to be asking for in June for um, so the master plan? Yes. So the what we're hopeful is that we will get some funding from MAPC. I've asked for um, $25,000 in technical assistance. We also estimate that the other work that we've already gotten through um, grant funds and other town meeting funds will pay for roughly thirty-five to forty thousand dollars. It's probably in the range of about sixty thousand dollars, which would be our ask. It's possible it could go down a little bit from there if we do get some technical assistance from MAPC. I will know more once I hear back on that grant application. I wish I had a firm number now, but we're working on that. And could you give us a, a quick update on the community compact oh, projects? Um, so the community compact projects, um, the one uh, that I have been working on, the transportation one, um, so that is a project that is uh, kind of a follow-on to, there are two transportation studies happening right now. One is grant-funded one from MAPC to look at a larger regional transportation um, suburban mobility study, and that's more about access to jobs. They wanted to do that study first, gather the information from it, and then move on to specify um, North Reading's um, power transit situation. So we're scoped, that project has been scoped. Um, we're getting MAPC under contract. That should be done um, by the end of the, the fiscal year. Um, that is the one that, that's the project that used uh, $5,000 of community compact money. The other community compact project is the sewer-related study, which um, I am not uh, directly involved in right now. So I can't give you an update on that. That's more of a DPW. Mr. Gilbert. Just to, by way of an update for the board with regard to the uh, sewer uh, study, um, we are uh, in the process of contracting with Wright Pierce. Uh, I have a purchase order that's been submitted to me, which I anticipate approving in the next day or so, so that we can move forward with completing that project before the June 30th, 2017 deadline. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Excuse me. Any Mr. other questions Mr. Chair? for Daniel, our members of the uh, CPC, Mr. Yo. Yes, um, make sure you can hear me. Um, with regard to uh, line item 51130, clerical, I see a 9.5% increase on that. That, that'd be uh, line, line item 51130. Under Clerical. personal services? Under, um, I'm sorry. Personal services, right? Personal services, that would be correct. Um, I think Liz wants to add something. Yes. Thank you. 
cumulative increase. Um, it's not one, that's not a one year increase. <coughs> Retroactive. Retroactive? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, it's just a quick question, Danielle. The relationship that we have with the um, Metro North housing, uh, there was fees associated with that. Right. Is that in here? Yes. So that actually, that has now become our entire professional services line item. So at one time we had an amount of about, I think it was 15 or 1700 in there. We no longer have that. We just have the fee for the um, Housing Services Office, which this year is $10,980. Okay. It's varied a little bit from year to year. Um, this year is probably the biggest increase that we've seen. Um, it's an increase of $472 over last year. And it's mainly staff cost. It's, it's, it's yeah, no, no, I'm not concerned about the increase. I'm just, oh. uh, you know, where <laughs> does it fit? <laughs> and if that's the entire professional services budget that you're proposing, are you leaving yourself enough wiggle room for other outside professional services well, as I needed mean, with all that's it taking would, place? It would be nice to have it. I do remember there was part of a discussion last year where there were some recommendations for our budget to be trimmed, not initiated by us, and we didn't you know, necessarily object to them, but I didn't propose bringing them back because I didn't have a specific use proposed. So I've left it alone for now. Um, I think also thinking, well, there is a small increase I didn't want to um, Increase that line you know, my, so much. You know, but if you think we need it, no, I, <laughs> we will say no. no. I think you need it. I, my guess is that there may be a need for it based upon all the initiatives that we have on, ongoing. Um, and we need some place to have funds situated in order to contract with people. Um, and I think it's, unless we get some other place to put it, I think it's most appropriate under your you know, planning commission's responsibilities. But I don't know that we have anything earmarked for outside services, you know, maybe with the town administrator's budget, but um, I just think there's an awful lot of initiatives that are ongoing right now that uh, and in some instances, depending upon what the state programs offer, we may need to uh, initiate some the use of some professional services in short order. We won't have an appropriation. so. Again, I, I can't guess, you know, you, you'd be in a far better position than I. Well, I you know. think that most of the initiatives that we have, either ongoing right now or hope to get for next year, either are grants that we know we've already secured and we know that those consulting fees are included within those amounts. Um, for example, the PATH grant was $15,000. We put out an RFP or an RFQ and um, we got a contractor who could do the work for under $11,000. So. You know, we've been able to do a lot of things under budget where we've, we've you know, planned for, you know, the, the Main Street study we did last year. We got the $25,000 grant for it. It fully covered it. So as of now, I haven't identified an area where I, I really believe we need additional consulting fees. I mean, particularly if we do come to town meeting and, you know, we do plan to come to town meeting and ask for funds for a master plan, that <coughs> whatever that amount of money will really need to be all-encompassing. Yeah, my my concern is that we just got caught short, and, th and again, I know that uh, conversations that the, uh, the chairman, myself, and the town administrator have with Secretary Ash, uh, he was getting very creative in his thinking as to how some of our initiatives may fit into some other programs. And I just didn't know if we were going to need some other outside services, and I'd like to be able to react to his bright ideas, uh, because he's been very helpful in the past, uh, to do so. That's all. So if there's something else that comes up between now and June, you think that we need to identify some additional resources or have a line item for me? You have the line item, but additional resources just to have available to react. Okay. I, I would be receptive, but that will only work. I can look at that. Mr. Sear? Uh, <clears throat> Daniel, first I want to thank you for all your work, especially with the EDC working with us. It's been, been great. Um, but one of the things as I was reviewing your budget and I went back and I looked at the EDC charge and I looked at some of the things that we need to do, God bless you, with the build, we're looking, thinking about building a local tax incentive program. Now that we've got the JPT Berry almost behind us, we're going to have to start attacking some of the other bullets that are in our charge. And the other one that we have to do is really start reaching out to our business community and to the major property owners. And one of the things I'd like to do is to try to have some formal or some nice 
get togethers where we may have some expense associated with that welcome them in especially if we get this program or we get the research completed on the um, package plants and how we present that I don't know where that I'm not looking for a lot of money but I'm thinking there should be a few hundred dollars here and there so we can host those kinds of events to try to make them more attractive to get the community the business community to come in and I'm not sure if that's right to put it in this budget or that ends up in the town administrator's budget I mean it's not a tremendous amount of money but I know we should identify it or at least have it programmed somewhere so we can do those things so we can achieve some of the charges that we have for the EDC would it be helpful if um, the town administrator and I sat down at some point to, or soon, to figure out what an amount of money might look like and where it would be appropriately situated, whether that's in the CPC budget or... Yeah, and I think you take into some of Mr. O'Leary's comments as well in that discussion. I think they're very valid and should be reviewed. And again, we're not talking a tremendous amount of money here. Mm -hmm. I know we have a budget issue, and I'm not trying to upset that even more. Okay. But I think if we don't capture these little bit of cost that could do big things for us I think we may find ourselves short any other comments finance committee questions we'll go on to the Board of Health thank you thank you Daniel. thank, thank you, you. Daniel. You're thank welcome. you Daniel. I'm gonna see if I can get this back where it was before sorry about that um, you can just do it. Okay. Yeah. thank you Board of Health, right? Board of Appeals. Board of, board of Health. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And protect the public health and the well-being of the citizens of North Reading while contributing to and uh, contributing to building a healthy, greener community and environment in which to live. Please um, talk a little bit louder. I'm sorry. Apologize. Thank you. Um, so some of the things that we've done last year, um, we developed a community assessment program um, that should be on the website soon um, of an assessment of, of the health improvement areas of the community from 2005 to 2014. That should be coming out to the website soon. It's not in your packets tonight. Um, I need to review that with my board first before we can put it onto the website. Um, we've developed some new uh, influenza uh, clinics uh, in collaboration with the business community. Um, we've also put together a couple of educational seminars in the community uh, for the residential community on West Nile virus, uh, Eastern equine encephalitis, uh, Zika virus, and Lyme disease. Uh, some of the other things that we've done is we've developed a health department policy and procedure for Title V installers, uh, implemented a new license exam for accountability and transparency, all the while we're sustaining the health department's involvement with the community impact team. Um, we've submitted a level funded budget. Uh, we feel that at this time um, it's sustainable to provide the essential services and programs uh, for the community at this time. Mr. Chairman, through you, I'll just note that there is a reduction in personal services for the uh, clerical position, the administrative position in the uh, department, and that's due to uh, the retirement of the longtime incumbent in that position, Susan Doherty, which I'll be referencing later on during the town administrator's report, uh, and their replacement with uh, Amy DeChara, who uh, began full-time work last Wednesday in that role. Uh, uh, set of savings in the, under, the sal under the salary, it's a lower, uh, lower step on the same gra grade. <coughs> Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Yule. Yes, uh, <coughs> again, uh, 51000, uh, I see a 64.6% .6 increase uh, in personal services. Um, how would that be explained? 
Again, that's uh, item uh, number 176 on the, it's actually a first page. Shows personal services, 64.6%. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. I apologize. I was going to say, I I'm apologize. I'm <laughs> Board of Health, Board of myself. Appeals. What the heck? Uh, I'm looking <laughs> I apologize. I'm looking over what you're looking at. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. it mine. Oh, <laughs> I. I <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I take back my question. Finance Committee, yes. Uh, the uh, influence of clinic interaction with Walmart. A few years ago, we established a revolving fund for the Yes. How does that interact? How does that affect the revolving account? How's the revolving account? Um, well, what we did this year is, is, is obviously I, I inherited this program, um, and the revolving account was at probably forty-five hundred dollars. So each year, uh, the Board of Health um, can purchase vaccine in advance, um, and for us to purchase the amount of vaccine that we needed. We didn't have the sufficient funds in the revolving account to do that. Um, so one of the things that, that I came up with working with the town administrator was to try to expand the community health program and working with the business community. And one of the things that we came up with was to partner with the business community to try to provide, to continue to provide that essential service to, uh, to the community. Um, I mean, if you, if you look at what the cost is for influenza, it's, it's $35 per dose and you have to purchase a 10 vial dose. That being said, with the numbers that I looked at the last couple of years, um, we vaccinated about 300 residents the last two or three years. So the cost associated with that would have been probably eight to $9,000 that we would have needed to have come up with um, to just provide that essential service. That's not including the administrative uh, cost of that with uh, paying for the nurses, the administrative assistance, the data input to the state <coughs> system. Um, by working <coughs> with Walmart last year, we saved, we had a cost savings of about $10,000 by doing that. Um, we still get vaccine from the state, but the state only provides us with vaccine for 18 and under. So we did have a clinic uh, for 18 and under here at Town Hall. Um, but we also did uh, ensure that we uh, vaccinated the homebound seniors uh, we also brought the flu clinic to the senior center, which has never happened before. Um, and so we're hopeful that we can continue that trend, uh, working with the business community to continue to provide that essential services to the community. Thank you. You're welcome. Bob? Yes, sorry, Michael. I'm, I know some of the rules and regulations have changed a little bit over the years. So my question is really related to the community, the community services that we do. And we have a lot of functions in town, like the tree lighting, the wine social that's coming up. We do a lot of social events down at Ipswich River Park. And a lot of those events require or demand the need to, do, to offer food. Yes. And all those events, do they have to, is there a new process now where they have to apply for a permit? pay for that permit even though it's a free service that we're trying to offer or somebody's trying to offer it to the community you just explain that process and if there are fees involved in it yes well the Board of Health as you know is in charge of making reasonable rules and regulations under chapter 111 uh, in order for us to issue a permit um, to local vendors that come into our community and provide a meal or charge uh, folks we have to issue a permit um, the events that you speak of um, these are vendors that come into our community that we don't permit or license. We know nothing about them. So we have to ensure that they meet the insurances of being properly permitted and inspected by the regulatory authority in which the community in which they reside in. Uh, if a restaurant has to come to the town, like the town day, uh, the mobile food events, um, they may be permitted in their community under their brick and mortar building. So when they come to our community, we have to ensure that they have the appropriate permits from their community in order to serve a meal outside the confinements of that brick and mortar building. Let me give you an example. The Horseshoe Grill, we'll use them as an example. Now, um, you know, they have a brick and mortar building down the street. So they are allowed to serve a meal in that building. 
if they want to come and do a function where they want to serve a meal and charge somebody, they have to have the appropriate catering license through the regulatory authority, which is us, in order to do so. That's under the state sanitary code 105 CMR 590. Um, so what we do is when we have these big events, we know nothing about these vendors, we don't know where they come from, and 85% of them are from out of town, we have to do due diligence and ensure that they're properly permitted and insured and permitted with us. But what about in the event where they don't charge and they want to donate it? For like they, our tree lighting or yeah, for... So, so some of those community organizations in which you speak of um, did come before the Board of Health on two different occasions. Um, the Board of Health did look at their permit fee structure and they did alter it on two different occasions to cater to those organizations, the Chamber of Commerce, the Farmer's Market, um, the tree lighting, um, I believe the other one was the Town Day or Nancy Wolf with the mobile thing. So basically a catering permit right now for the Board of Health is $200. What the Board of Health did was they developed a blanket permit fee. So they would charge an organization $100 for local vendors and they could have unlimited vendors so long as they were appropriately permitted with us. They would charge a blanket permit fee of $150 for unlimited number of outside vendors so long as they were properly permitted with their regulatory authority. The perfect example I can give you is, is what we had last year at the high school was the taste of Metro North, I believe that was. The permit fees totaling that should have been $14,000. Um, the organization paid a permit fee of $250. That's where the Board of Health listened to the concerns and the needs of the community and altered their uh, permit fee sc uh, structure for them. I just don't want the small revenue generation to be a deterrent to have and host events in our community. That's all. I, you know, I just want to make sure, and I don't want to break any laws either yeah. doing it. So I wasn't sure where that was coming from. Well, well, and again, I just, I, I didn't see it in your budget. I don't see those revenues here, but yeah. I assume they were somewhere mixed in there. Well, again, I, I don't set the permit fees. That's done by the Board of Health. My job is to be the health agent and defer those communications to them, and, and that's what I've done. So really, it, it's, it's incumbent upon the board if they want to alter those fees. I don't set the fees. That's done by the Board of Health under Chapter 111. I don't have the right to waive fees. I don't have the right to set fees. Um, that's done by the Board of Health. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Hill. Yes. Um, <coughs> first of all, um, you're doing an exceptional job for the town. Um, you are protecting the town, and that is your responsibility, and respecting and protecting the um, uh, people within the community. Um, I'm going to take off of what um, Selectman Prisco was saying because I, I do have the same, uh, similar concerns. I I can understand if a business, for the purposes of producing revenue for their business decides to put a, a truck somewhere in town and uh, sell food. And I understand the, permit, the reasons for the permitting process. Uh, I, I have that. I got that. But a lot of the events that we have in town are to generate revenue for the town. Uh, July 4th committee is a good example of that. Um, uh, and they're helping uh, the town have a big event for the town. It's not designed for a specific committee just to simply make money. So it's not uh, a revenue producing format in that regard. Um, the event that Mr. Prisco just mentioned as well at, at the school the the intent is not to make money for anybody but the town and what happens is, is that if we have fees that take away from that revenue then it becomes counterproductive people are not producing the end game that they they want to do so and i understand that you mentioned that it, it, the board of health sets that the fees and that Probably, we need to work with the Board of Health. And when you say the Board of Health, you do, are you talking about the State Board of Health or are you talking about the Town of North Reading Board of Health? The, the Town of Reading, North, uh, Board of Health. North Reading, okay. All right, so then, then, then we, need, we need to have some type of dialogue 
to create venues where there's a fee for a given type of an event and then there's a fee for another purpose. So uh, uh, someone just wanting to put a truck, I think there was a hot dog guy who used to put a truck over uh, by the park on Park Street and he used to have a truck there and he'd be there for about three hours during the day and um, he'd sell hot dogs. Anybody go driving by can get a hot dog. It's like a hot dog stand, a hot dog car. <laughs> All right, and, and that's different because he's doing that for himself. But when you have it, when it's being done on the beha uh, to the benefit of the town, we really need to, to, to look at those fees that we have and make them much more reasonable than, than, than what they are. Uh, so, so just to interject, if, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, um, so by the Board of Health taking that $14,000 that should have been the permits fees for that event and making it $250, is, is that not what you're asking? I'm, I'm not sure what, what you're saying, what you're describing. Uh, uh, what, what I'm saying is we have an event. We, we have an event for the town. Yeah. Okay, and there's going to be food there. Yeah. All right, and, and, and the purpose of this event is to raise money for the town. Yeah. Now, I understand fees go to the town as well. I mean, I, I, I got that. All right, but fees don't bring the town together. Food trucks bring the town together, or the, the wine tasting brings the town together. Yeah. Okay, uh, fees don't accomplish that. That's, that's why for town events, we need to have a fee structure that's going to generate activity within the town that will allow the, the people to come together versus having high fees and not having the event or having a restricted event. Well, and I guess that's what I'm conveying to you. That's what the Board of Health has already done. They, they did it on a given instance. Is this going to be... It's a, it's, they've altered their permit fee structure for community-wide events. That, that's what I had just mentioned to, to you. Uh, maybe I misunderstood. That. So okay, yeah, well no, then you're, that's you're, using that an example was the, the taste of Metro North that was up at the high school last year. The permit fees should have equaled $14,000 for the number of vendors that were there. <coughs> they, those organizations that you speak of came before the Board of Health, addressed their concerns. The Board took their concerns under consideration and had me alter a new permit fee structure for those organizations here in town, which we have now followed for almost a year and a half. Oh, so you do have a set structure on that now? For these particular events. Put the, right. Okay, good. So the most okay. these organizations would pay based on the number of vendors that they could have, they could have unlimited vendors, the most they would pay is $250. And the board felt that, felt that that was adequate because someone had to pay the cost of sending somebody out to do the inspections. <coughs> Catherine? So just, I now I'm, I was, I, I might be a little more confused now. So those vendors that participated in these town-wide events that got the reduced fee turned over all the funds to raise money for town purposes? Is that, I'm not following what's right, going on. So I'm not, we're gonna, we're I think I'm more confused yeah, now okay, than I so was. So we're going to use the event, the taste of uh, Metro North that was last year at the high school. Yes, right. We factored that the number of vendors at $200 a catering permit each came out to about $14,000, which should have been the permit fee. To the board and myself, we felt that that was egregious. And we had, I couldn't change the, the fee structure. And that's because, just let me just, because someone's buying a ticket to that event and getting free food or free, what the, whatever no, the event. I have no control over that. We just. Th that is how that event works. Right. So, yes. so yes. they're Correct. purchasing a ticket that's going to fundraising purposes. Yeah. So the participating vendors that are providing their items for free for purposes of that yep. aren't getting charged for providing that or they're getting that little and, and that's, minimum and that's the consideration that the board took okay and that's why they altered that permit yes. fee structure so yeah. that that the permit fee itself would cover the cost of somebody going out doing the inspection it right. wasn't about taking in the money it was about right. covering the cost and working <coughs> with the community groups like the chamber, um, the farmers yeah. market, Makes sense, and, yeah. and all the church groups, um, and that's what we've done over the last year and a half. Okay. <coughs> Michael, 
No, he didn't. No, he didn't answer my question, so Thank I was you. all set. <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I want you guys to understand that I, I can certainly send you the fee structure through the town administrator, just so you can see what we did. If, if, if that makes the no, I, I think the ultimate goal here was just to make sure that our because we have to have a fee structure that it's friendly to the community so we encourage more community events and don't discourage them that's the ultimate goal and you know, I'm not sure how much money we really collect from all these fees it can't be that much so I'd rather have less fees encourage more participation but don't let anybody circumvent the approval to make sure they have all the right things in place yeah. to, to be so you're happy and you're satisfied well, again, it's really the Board of Health. I mean, the, the Board wanted to hear the concerns of the community, and they did that on, two, like I said, two different occasions. Um, and they altered the fee schedule twice uh, for those groups because they, they took their concerns uh, and, and changed the fee structure for them. It, and again, with the Board, it, it wasn't about the fee coming in. It was about code compliance and ensuring that these places are outside vendors are properly insured and inspected and, and permanent. And they're not here tonight, are they? <coughs> it, it would seem to me that the steps that the uh, Board of Health has taken associated with what we call town fundraising events is, is more than adequate. They're, they're performing the legal inspections, assuring that uh, vendors that are coming in are properly insured and are following the right procedures, and the, the host of the event is getting the <coughs> bill, I would guess. And it's not a... In most yeah. cases, and, and again, to select McCusker's point, in some of these events that they do uh, donate the food, food and they don't <coughs> charge people coming in, we do waive the fee. Um, and we have done that on a couple of occasions That's I was this confirming. Year. That's all. Mm -hmm. David, just in relation to the uh, proposed development out here on uh, uh, Lowell Road, uh, are you anticipating in the upcoming fiscal year the need for additional time or services, or professional services to review plans? And, and I don't know when they're going to start construction of the, uh, the treatment plant. And what role do you foresee yourself playing, and is there going to be a need? Which to bury property. 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 That's going to be probably permitted by the state because it's over 10,000 gallons a day. So that'll be the state who permits them. Um, we, we certainly will um, take part in that just to oversee it, but I don't think that we have any code enforcement right. authority in that. Okay. Great. Don? Uh, a question Don. on the, pass the, the uh, environmental health, the purchase services, about $62,000. Can you just give us any in round numbers what the big items are in there? I know it hasn't gone up from last year, but Beaver. I don't know what we're, what we're buying. Beaver dams. Most of it's mosquito, it's mosquito right? Control, yeah. Most of the mosquito control. Yes. Forty-eight thousand five hundred. Twenty-eight five. Forty-eight. Twenty-eight five. Okay. That's All right. And if I can make a point to that on the mosquito control, even though the town pays that amount of money. In turn, we get the professional services from the mosquito control, uh, where they provide uh, educational seminars to the residents of the community, which we, we had here last year. So we do utilize that service to provide educational uh, seminars for residents on, as I mentioned, West Nile virus, triple E, Zika virus, and Lyme disease. So uh, we, we're going to utilize that service again this year. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Code enforcement. Good evening. Good evening. I'll start with the Board of Appeals because I know Mr. you will have a question. <laughs> <laughs> It's level funded. I'm assuming your question is in with the salaries. Yes. Thank uh, you. What does a uh, vacant position now in the clerical uh, that hasn't been filled uh, because of the, all the different 
positions that are being filled in town. It's kind of on the bottom of the list. Uh, but we plan to fill it, uh, or at least look to fill it July 1st, so it will be in the budget. And that's why the, uh, you know, the 18407 is in the salary, showing the increase of 7226 We're doing it, we're filling it uh, right now on a part-time basis, overtime and part-time. Um, you know, with the clerical we right. have. So, but we're looking to fill that. It's a 16-hour position, so hopefully July 1st that'll be filled. Liz? I also just want to comment and add, um, at October Town Meeting, we did modify this budget to include the uh, $4,500. So that $4,500 is reflected in the FY17 budget number of 11181 So the department request um, for FY18 would be for the full amount of the position. Um, and that position also is part of the clerical union which that contract was ratified. So it's still bringing someone in at um, a mid-level step in that grade because we're not sure if someone internally will apply for it or not, so we took a blended rate. If someone internally applies for it, they wouldn't be brought in at the first step. Thank you. Both. Continue. Uh, okay, building. Uh, it's, it's a level-funded budget. I call it level-funded. Uh, aside from salaries, the increase is only about 1700 and that's to cover training and code books because we're on a new code cycle. Uh, the new electrical code started January 1st. We need new books for that. Uh, the ninth edition of the building code is coming out July or June. Uh, so we're going to need new books for that. So in the training goes along with those books. So that's where the increase is on the, uh, on the expense side. But other than that, it's a level funded. Uh, permits are running the same as last year. Uh, so. I mean, that'll change with everything coming in town. You know, if they, I don't know if the Barry property is going to get up and running this fiscal, you know, this calendar year, or if it'll be next calendar year, depending on how things go. Uh, but the permit fees for that's going to be substantial, just like the other, uh, mm -hmm. the other units were. This fiscal year. It should fall into this, and FY18, you should see activity. Oh, it should? Okay, yeah. right. Next calendar year. Yeah. Early bit, ne but yeah. end of upcoming so I'm not sure if you need to make an adjustment based on that. Uh, you mean for as far as services goes? Uh, you know, I would wait, and, and if we have to adjust at that point, I, I'd work with the town administrator. But you know, it usually starts off pretty slow. You know, I don't know how aggressive they're going to be. If they're talking two and a half years or three year project. No, five year. Five-year project? Yeah. Oh, I hadn't heard that. Okay. Nine buildings. Yeah. It's going to be nine buildings over there, so. So you're going to have to hang around until they're all built. Yeah. Until they're finished, huh? Mike, go ahead. Well, I'll let Jim finish. I just had one question. Uh, okay, yeah. The only other thing, uh, we've been looking at permitting software. Uh, we constantly look at that. Uh, we just haven't found anything that's reasonable. Uh, we've had a couple of presentations, and and the prices are just uh, out of sight. Trying to get something that will uh, work with Munis so that everything will tie in. Uh, so what that, that's ongoing. What do other communities use? Do you know well, what the other communities are using? Munis uh, module to do that? No, there is a Munis module. Some communities use the Munis module. Um, some communities look at uh, this other software and use uh, the viewpoint. The viewpoint. Um, Honestly, both are very, very expensive. Um, What's very? Viewpoint wants over, I think it was $25,000 a year just for the support, Ooh. not even just for the initial buy-in. Um, yeah, that's, that's the problem, the support, the, the yeah. continuing payment to, you know, the town has to put out for support. We don't have that much activity. No. <laughs> and I believe that Munis, to buy it up front, is 60000 in that range. Um, and then there would be annual support, but not as much as viewpoints. Um, I know communities have gone through the conversion and gone to Munis and then abandoned it. So, um, you know, we're, we're still researching. Yes, Michael. So my question was really related to something you brought up in last year's budget that you were thinking about or trying to uh, maybe acquire a, a drone to do some roof inspections, which I thought was a, a great idea. 
and then I had suggested that maybe you look at an outside service instead of buying it, maybe just hire out for the service. It's not that very it's not very expensive to do it. And I was curious not to see that you even mentioned it this year. So is yeah, it something? We, yeah, um, we actually have somebody in town that, uh, that will do it, and has offered to you know do a few of them, you know, just to uh, give you an idea. Uh, he would use his drones and you know take some pictures, look at the roofs and the chimneys and stuff. So. Um, I haven't reached out to him yet, but that's a possibility, you know, before we get into buying one. I, I'd like to coordinate with the police and fire because I think they would have a, a, a bigger use for it. Uh, you oh, you I to see that on the news now. Anytime it, there's an event, there's a drone up there, and, and, and they can look at it and look at the structure even after the in incident. So, mm. uh, I did ask the, the fire chief at the budget hearing about this. And he didn't seem too interested in it, but I agree with you. I thought he would have a bigger interest in it. Yeah. But I don't think it's a lot of money, and I certainly would like to see some money in your budget so you can acquire those services. I'm not saying we should buy one. I don't think we should own one. Okay. I, yeah. I think you should. I, I just think it's a great idea for you. There's no need to be getting on ladders when we don't have to now. Right, exactly. And they literally get up there, they record it, hand you a CD, and you walk away. Yeah. It's, it's a few, well, yeah, a few bucks. <coughs> oh. Just a suggestion. I, I thought you brought up a really good one last year. Mr. Yule. Yeah, uh, in, in, with regard to drones, <coughs> to do that, you're going to uh, either have to be trained to do it or you have hire someone to do it for you, correct? Right. Okay. Any idea which you think is more cost effective, whether you do it or... I think the outside source at this point would be the, you know, that they have the drones, they know what, you know, how to run it, you know, uh, you know, just have them come out to three or four properties, you know, a day or, you know, schedule a couple hours or one week or something and, and use it and see how it works. Yeah, well, that's good because I have on my talking points for later uh, discussions I've been having with regard to drones being used in the town uh, for different scenarios. So uh, um, thank you, Mr. Pisco, for even bringing it up and suggesting it because there are values in this, one of which is safety, and the other one would probably be accuracy, you know. Yep. So thank you. Anyone from the Finance Committee have any questions? Pass, yeah, it does. Pass the mic. Oh. Pass the mic. Sorry, Dan. Pass the mic. Jim, I just saw know, in your objectives, the need for an assistant wire. We've had. Is that uh, reflected in your budget? Uh, that's that's ongoing. We've actually we've actually have somebody. Uh, that position doesn't need any funding. It's well, it does. It's it's under emergencies, but it's only on an as needed basis. Uh, if the electrical inspector is out of town or on vacation or something, he would fill in. Um, or if we need them on a storm where we need two or three inspectors, you know, they'd go out. Uh, but, it, but it's a set, uh, I believe it's like $25 an hour for whenever we needed him. Uh, we've got someone to appoint, and we're just waiting for that appointment in for the town clerk to swear him in. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Okay, now we have informational hearings, starting with, uh, for the March 13th uh, town meeting, we have Article 1, Amend the Code, Zoning Bylaws, Changes to Residential Multifamily family Zoning District Bylaw. Mr. Chairman, yes. do you desire to read the hearing notice? Okay, I will do that. The North Reading Board of Selectmen does hereby notify the residents of the Town of North Reading that hearings on the following articles contained in the March 13, 2017 Special Town Meeting Warrant will be held Monday, March 6, 2017 at 8.15 p.m. from 14 Town Hall. Article 1, amend zoning bylaws, changes to residential multifamily zoning district bylaw uh, section 200-90. Article 2, amend the code, zoning bylaw, establish a multifamily housing overlay district. 
Article 3, amend code zoning bylaw, changes to dimensional and density requirements of the industrial office zoning district bylaw, section 200-40. Article 4, amend code zoning bylaw, changes to word uses and definitions, section 200-4. Article 5, appropriate money for the construction of facilities at Arthur J. Kenny Field. Article 6, amend code zoning bylaw prohibited uses recreational <coughs> marijuana establishments. These hearings are held in uh, pursuant to section 23B of chapter 39 of the Massachusetts <coughs> General Law, the open meeting law. Any interested citizens as well uh, are welcome to attend and participate in these hearings. And the notice of explanation is as follows. It is the unanimous desire of the North Reading Board of Selectmen to encourage and allow the highest level of public participation in making decisions that affect North Reading. It is our belief that these informational hearings will foster and enable more participation in town government by its citizens. The hearing will also allow board to uh, the board to make informed and considered recommendations to town meeting. We sincerely hope that you will join us for the hearings and will attend the special <coughs> town meeting on March 13, 2017. And it's signed by uh, the chairman of the board, myself, uh, Stephen O'Leary, vice chair, Catherine Manuel Pelly, uh, clerk, Michael Prisco, and Selectman Jeffrey Hill. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> so we have two PowerPoint presentations this evening. One is a general PowerPoint presentation in the format that the board is familiar with seeing. <coughs> and then we have a more detailed zoning bylaw amendment PowerPoint that the Community Planning Commission through the town planner will present. And that concerns the four articles related to zoning over at the area of 104 Lowell Road. Just a public service announcement for anyone who might be listening. There is a quorum requirement for this special town meeting. 150 registered voters, according to the town clerk. So it's critical that we have turnout at the town meeting in order that we can conduct the town's business. Without 150 voters, we cannot conduct business. And uh, it could create a number of different concerns regarding timelines associated with the property on Lowell Road, as well as the other articles that are on the warrant. So again, encourage attendance at 7 o'clock at the Performing Arts Center at North Reading High School. I'd just like to, uh, uh, <coughs> just to say when we talk about Lowell Road, we're talking about the sale of the Berry property. We are, that's correct. Just so that I think a lot of people understand that more than Lowell Road. Certainly, yes, I am speaking to the Berry property. So uh, what I'll do is uh, turn it over to the town planner who's got her own presentation to go through the, the Warren articles and then perhaps Mr. Chairman afterwards, so. either at the end or at the end of the discussion of those four articles, we can talk about who wishes to present or report the board's okay. recommendation on those articles. First four in the warrant um, pertain to um, the JT Berry property and uh, the vicinity. So um, <clears throat> first, um, I'll just do a very quick overview of what the four of them are. Article one, uh, changes to the existing residential multifamily zoning district, and I'll explain in a little further detail why we need to do that. That district is actually located at 113 Haverhill Street but there, we wanted to make sure there were no conflicts or contradictions between, um, between those two, uh, the, the two areas. Um, article two is the establishment of a new multifamily housing overlay district which pertains to the JT Berry property and the four properties around it. Article three, um, changes to the industrial office district which will remain the underlying zoning for the Berry property. And article four, um, which changes one of our glossary definitions um, in order to make the other zoning changes uh, completely work and be consistent with the rest of the bylaw. Um, <clears throat> so first, I'll talk about the changes to the existing RM zoning district, which is residence multifamily. 
We have one um, area, I'll just uh, show it on the here. Um, Railroad Avenue, uh, the 113 Hamble Street, Ipswich River Town <coughs> Development, that is our RN zoning district. That zoning district has a corresponding uh, section in our zoning bylaw that has um, provisions for what a multifamily zoning, what, what a multifamily development can have. Um, it was never clear in that bylaw whether it was intended to refer to all multifamily development elsewhere in town or just to this district. Some of the provisions in the bylaw specifically say in RM, some of them don't. So what we've done is we have added some changes to the Residence M bylaw to make it perfectly clear that those provisions um, that exist in section 200-90 are only for RM. And that's really important because it has provisions such as you know height limits are capped at two and a half stories. That doesn't work for the development that's being proposed um, you know, at the JT Berry property. <coughs> So this bylaw um, basically just eliminates some inconsistencies um, with the new overlay district proposed. Article two uh, is the new multifamily housing overlay district. And this is um, an overlay district that is in addition to the base zoning. Industrial office zoning would remain the base zoning um, for, the, for the properties that are affected, which if you'll see here, um, here's Lowell Road. It's 102 and Lowell, and 104 Lowell Road is the larger, um, where it's marked the proposed uh, Pulte development. Um, 102 Lowell Road is the smaller parcel, it's currently for sale, we have an RFP out right now. Um, the Edgewood Apartments, uh, the town, an town land where a water facility is, and uh, Riedemann Field. Um, and just as a, an explanation for why the, these properties <coughs> are all included in the proposed overlay is, not because development is, is proposed for any of them other than 102 and 104, but because this is an isolated area of industrial office where um, we, we're really not able to single out a single parcel in zoning. Um, we really look to do a full section, um, otherwise it could be considered spot zoning. So um, for this, we considered that the whole cluster of IO zoned properties south of Lowell Road um, would be an appropriate target zone for these properties. It includes the proposed development, and it also includes Edgewood, to which there is no proposed change in the development. Um, <coughs> Rita Mellon Field, there is no proposed um, development there. It's simply that our town parks are all zoned in the zoning district of their surroundings. You know, if Switch River Park is zoned Residence A, um, no one's going to put single family homes on, them, on, on that park, but that's just how all of our parks are zoned. So just to be very clear, even though that is a property that's included in the, the proposed overlay, it, there's no plan <coughs> and no ability for us to build on it uh, without special legislation and additional town meeting action, and that is not uh, part of the plan. Um, the, so basically what the residence overlay, what this um, residential overlay zoning would accomplish is simply to allow for multifamily housing. That's just to introduce a, an, another use. Um, there are a few additional provisions related to parking, but the main idea, the, the, the impetus for that zoning district is really to um, allow for the uh, residential multifamily use, which is not currently allowed in um, an industrial office. This is a way for us to allow it in an industrial office without also allowing it everywhere else industrial office exists, such as on Concord Street and on the Benevento property. Article three, um, these are changes to the actual base zoning, the industrial office zone. So um, some of these are actually changes that the CPC has previously talked about making anyway, because they feel it would be in the interest of the district, but they also do happen to work with the Pulte proposal. Um, the minimum building height is currently 50 feet, so the proposal would be to raise that to 60 feet, and that would be for everywhere. Industrial office you know, is, you know, exists. It clarifies, um, there's currently a provision that says that if you have a story and a half of garage parking, it does not count toward your, toward your four story height limit. Um, we <coughs> found it necessary, and Pulte also asked for clarification, that we also give a, a number of feet because um, height is usually given in stories and feet, so we only had a 1.5 story provision. We didn't also have a corresponding 15 foot provision. So this just adds um, to that. It's not allowing any additional height. It's just clarifying that a story and a half or 15 feet of your parking garage does not count toward your height limit. And there's another provision that the CPC has also previously talked about, which is um, currently if you have certain commercial uses, particularly retail, 
um, in industrial office, they have to be 50,000 square feet or more um, in, so in building size. And that was a pretty restrictive provision. And the CPC has previously talked about just eliminating that because it's, it is a deterrent to development. It's kind of an unnecessary restriction. Now, this is not a provision that would pertain to the Pulte development because Pulte is, um, this is a completely residential development, but it may potentially affect um, 102 Lowell Road, which is the property that we have the RFP out on now. And um, so currently, you know, the RFP has re you know, requested a preference for the uses allowed in industrial office, which are commercial uses. So that would be to the benefit of, of all of industrial office, but would really, in, in reality, only apply to 102 Lowell Road. Um, yeah. Question on the previous slide, oh, maybe the height. Uh, you know, uh, sorry. Okay. Yes. Minimum building height. <laughs> do you mean maximum? Yeah. Yes, I do. Oh, thank you. Okay. I do mean maximum. <laughs> I was just asking the question here. <laughs> um, I mean. That error is only in your PowerPoint, <laughs> I presume. <laughs> that is only a PowerPoint. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure. No, it's not. That's not in the in the zoning that way. Um, okay. Yes. Thank, Thank you for pointing that out. That does not. Continue while you're on that the slide. Yeah. I just have a quick question. That uh, one and a half stories or 15 feet. Yeah. One and a half stories is greater, certainly greater than 15 feet. In a garage situation, we thought that it would be about about right. Yeah, I just maybe I, I should put my other glasses that, on. Yeah. Does that seem off? Um, you might see it behind you. Garage, you so one and a half stories of garage <coughs> parking don't right. count towards the height of it. That one and a half stories or 15 feet. I mean, one and a half stories is how tall? About 15 feet. No? A story is only 10 feet? Uh, I, 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 Approximately, yeah. yeah. Is it, I wasn't sure. Garage, yeah. What's that? Depends on the garage and the structure, but typically. Well, I'm just, I'm just talking about whether it's a garage or a house. Or, uh, it's a garage. <laughs> no, I know, this but, pertains just to garage. I know, so but, this, but a story a lower. in building terms is what, 10 feet? I don't know. It's 12 feet? It's one of the parking garages, such as in Boston, when you uh, Good catch. Um, Drive in there, it looks like your roof will mount them at the top of that garage. Right. So the, when they build the parking garage, they generally keep them very low profile. And I think that's where the 15 feet comes from. Yeah, you're only using about 10 feet of area to build that garage. You only get about seven of it for your vehicle. The other three is support and concrete. Yeah, so no, this is residential part. Yeah, have too. Yeah. Okay, that just. It seems small, but if, if you measure in one of those parking garage, it works. Um, should I go Any on? Any other questions? Oh, should I go to another question on Article <coughs> Okay, so for Article 4, um, this is a change to the word uses and definition section. Um, so currently, we have a definition of overlay district in our zoning that requires that where there is a conflict between an overlay district and base zoning, it's always <coughs> a more restrictive provision that controls. And in reality, an overlay district can be either more restrictive or less restrictive. And an example of that would be, we have an aquifer protection district, which is more restrictive. You know, if you are in an aquifer protection district, in addition to the base zoning, you have additional rules you need to follow and additional restrictions. Another example is um, of, a, of a less restrictive zone, though, would be the very smart growth overlay, where multifamily housing is allowed in an overlay. It's not allowed in the base zoning. So overlays, um, just by definition, can be either way. And to say that all overlays must be, um, you know, that it's always a more restrictive provision to control is, is inconsistent with the rest of the zoning. So this clarifies that, and it also um, would. You know, we would need to make sh make sure that that was very clear because the multifamily, the proposed multifamily zoning overlay is actually less restrictive than than what is the what the base zoning is. So that's the um, that. um that's the uh, overview of the four articles <coughs> that pertain to the, to the questions for Danielle. Mr. Chip, Mr. Just on, on Article Two. Um, Maybe I was mistaken and it's changed since uh, before. I thought the Planning Commission was anticipating including the property across 
the road, which entails now the, uh, the sand and gravel pit and potentially the back acreage here for this building, Town Hall. We haven't, we haven't really discussed that. I think it's, it's such a big property and the future uses for it are, we, we really don't know what or, or when it would be available and what might be appropriate. We don't know a lot about um, the current condition, um, you know, the future availability. So we decided to just, just leave that out and there really wasn't much discussion about trying to rezone that. Also, um, the impact, um, so that property directly abuts the, the residential neighborhoods on the other side as you get closer to Martin's Pond. And we were concerned that if we started introducing a lot of new uses um, to this very large property that was really, you know, up in that neighborhood, um, that we might get some unanticipated impacts. I think it's definitely a candidate for, you know, rezoning in the future. But we didn't really feel prepared at this time to propose the zoning without having impacts on those neighborhoods up in there. Yeah, because that, that, that's privately owned right now, so that you know, so it's unlike the JT Berry property where we could put out a request for proposal and say, you know, give us a good proposal and we'll consider mm -hmm. taking care of the zoning for you as to what we're doing right now. Um, and I know a lot of that property is wet. <coughs> you know, once the portion of the property that directly abuts the back side of the Martin's Pond area is there's a pretty significant buffering in relation to uh, wetlands and what could be done there. Just, um, I mean, the current zoning for that would allow for what type of things? So it's industrial office. So retail, office space, light industrial uses, light manufacturing um, with a special permit, no residential. Um, there would have to be rezoning for residential to be allowed. The, also, the, the overlay is for residential multifamily. Um, the zoning can't be age-restricted, just the project is age-restricted. So if you introduced unrestricted multifamily zoning, I think that would be a larger question that, um, you know, would, would warrant a lot of additional study and weighing of what it would mean to allow fairly high-density residential on that property. But again, that's one of the single largest parcels around available left in town for uh, development. I have had no conversation with the owner of the property, but I don't know what their long-term plans are. And uh, is this really how, it, currently, it doesn't appear as though there is a market for what it is currently zoned for. And as far as you know, what we're gleaning from this from a tax revenue standpoint, it's not very significant because of its current use. So there isn't any real encouragement to do anything else with it. So I just, I, I guess, maybe early on in the discussion when we talked about this, you know, a year or more ago, we I were talking about including this about parcel, or those parcels also in this district. I think what we had been talking about was making changes to industrial office in general, and that would have included that property. And so a lot of the considerations we were making at that time was, well, if we're making changes to industrial office, it's going to affect the Benevento property, so we need to carefully consider what that means. I, I think that might be the time that, that you, know, you might be thinking of. Um, and I definitely think, I mean, this is a really big, significant property. You know, really interesting potential. I think certainly if we do a master plan update next year, that's got to be something that we start looking into. That's a really um, big area. Of, and, you know, the, the question mark, we would love to, you know, care if the owners um, might be thinking about um, what people might like to see there in the future. And again, this particular parcel here, uh, depending upon long range, what happens to town hall, um, what do we have, about nine acres here? Ten and a half. Uh, ten and a half acres. And again, directly abuts <coughs> that parcel. Right. And again, ties in nicely with whatever long range plans we may have. So, yeah. Mr. Chair, I think Warren had. Yeah, right. Warren. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're correct when you talk about that, but one of the things we are also talking about then is, is holding on to commercial development on the Berry property. And so a modification or an extension of the IO district. Um, would have made sense. We, we would have modified it to put some kind of commercial property in there, but slowly but surely we keep moving more and more towards <coughs> residential. So, um, so Danielle's correct that uh, try to look at uh, what we might do with that. It would seem in the current climate you would be looking at a bunch of residential, and that might be uh, you know, difficult to for the town to absorb. 
on a, on a, a piece of property that big. So, so I think waiting until we see a little more of what their plan is, and then uh, seeing what the climate is at that time too, both business and residential climate, is, might be a better way of approaching that. I think that's what we're thinking about doing. Anyone else questions? Continue. Or are you done? That's all I have for the four articles that pertain to the Barry. No other questions. Uh, has the CPC taken a, a position? Have you voted on these articles, Warren? No. Actually, at our public hearing, we did vote to recommend the, these four. Oh, these four articles. Yeah. Yes, just these four. So before we go on, does the board want to? Uh, we want to close the public hearing on those articles. Then we, then we take this no, uh, let's recommend. finish. Let's finish, and then we'll do it. Okay. Next is the uh, article five, funding for construction of facilities of uh, J. Kenny Field, Gilberto, who is presenting. Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, I'll start, and uh, certainly I'm sure Mr. O'Leary can provide additional information based on the well, effort. I'd like to save you a voice. Uh. <laughs> Appreciate your consideration. <coughs> I've only got a few slides, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Mr. O'Leary, if that's okay, Mr. O'Leary. Thank All you. Right. Now, this is just a quick slide that um, reflects the balance for available funds for uh, the financial article that's on the uh, warrant, which is related to the uh, Arthur Kenny Field um, restrooms. It does not reflect the use of fundings that we've planned, <coughs> the use of funding on this slide that we have planned for in the FY 2018 budget. So we've not made those reductions. But our FY 18 budget relies on using funds from multiple sources that are on here. But I just put this on because we've had it at each town meeting. We may update it for town meeting to reflect what the projections are for FY 18, but right now it's not updated. <coughs> so. <coughs> Article 5, again, the construction of facilities at Arthur J. Kenny Field. Can everybody hear me okay? That's the one thing about having a cold. You can't miss what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> we had estimated construction cost uh, for the recommended option at approximately $565,000 as of January 31st. The project proceeded to design development through the month of February. Estimated construction costs for the recommended option increased in that time to $652,000 on March 2nd plus $26,768 for the concrete pad alternate. And I have a layout that I'll show on the next slide. I had recommended in a financing proposal in October that we include $450,000 in free cash with any additional amount to be borrowed. And we can discuss you know, through financial planning whether or not that borrowing would take place inside or outside of the capital plan, as well as a discussion with the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Again, the layout, just to show everybody what we're talking about here. Um, you can see we have the stalls on the right and left side there. There's a chase in the middle and a concrete pad that would be the alternate that I referenced. And if you can picture the location, it's just about right on top of the existing concession stand. So the proposal would be to demolish the existing concession stand <coughs> and construct on that site. You see that there's a proposal for installing a drain line to run down to a force main, which would then run back up to the existing wastewater treatment facility at the high school, middle school complex. You see there's also, a, it's kind of faint there, but there's an existing um, gas line, an existing water line as well. I can't quite pick it up from this distance, but this is generally where the existing concession stand is. This is a note that I extrapolated from the presentation that was made by the uh, architect at uh, the posted meeting of the athletic facility subcommittee. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't a quorum of the committee there, but the remaining members did receive this information. And I'll just note a few of the areas where there were changes in the, uh, in the cost. Uh, here on the foundation line item, it increased by approximately $12,000. And down here on the um, installation of the modular building itself with a broom finish, increased approximately $40,000. So our $10,000 savings for the utility connections and an additional $57,000 associated with the site work. And that all nets out to approximately $99,000 in uh, total increase related to the project. 
Uh, next steps, the Athletic Facility Committee did post a meeting to meet tomorrow afternoon uh, over at the high school middle school complex. Again, I've just noted some options that might be considered, and the reason I'm noting this in this forum is because it is the selectmen that are the sponsor for this warrant article. We've been relying on some the, the, from uh, on the um, advisory position of this athletic committee because of the multiple stakeholders that are on it, including the school department, Parks and Recreation, <coughs> the Finance Committee, and an advisory capacity as well. And the options I identified was we <coughs> could proceed with requesting the construction appropriation based on the cost estimate that we've been provided, which again is further updated to reflect design development over the past month by CBI, who was the architect selected last fall. Could request funds for additional designer services now to bid out the construction and request funds for construction itself in June uh, with the bids in hand. We've not generally done this for construction projects. Uh, however, as some may, may recall that when we ended up approving the final contract amount for the secondary school project, we did, I believe, have the bids in hand at that time, if I understand the history correctly. But that was the second action, obviously, on that project. <coughs> or we could request funds for additional designer services now to evaluate other options. And again, we don't have uh, in hand the comments of the Athletic Facility Subcommittee. Um, I know there are members of that committee uh, who are uh, participating in the school committee's budget discussions tonight. I, I know they wanted to be here and they could not be here, um, but um, Mr. O'Leary and I reported at the meeting on Thursday that we would update the board so that the board is aware in as much real time as possible as to where things stand with regard to this project which has drawn so much attention. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, it continues to draw attention. Uh, everybody, <coughs> obviously, uh, the, the latest updated figures uh, with the uh, Progression, progression of design phase um, brings us to the $652,000 on a specific uh, project that uh, the Athletic Facility Subcommittee uh, recommended moving forward with. Uh, there is concern in relation to the dollar amount uh, that these projections are coming in at at this particular time. Um, there is uh, somewhat of a consensus uh, that we believe that these numbers are, are rather conservative and that uh, if we were to put it out to bid, uh, there's strong feelings that uh, it would come in uh, at, le at a lesser amount. However, in order to do that, we would need uh, an additional appropriation for architectural, ar architectural design plans to bring it to the bidding stage. Um, included in, in, the, in the budget figure is approximately $56,000 uh, in the 600 $52,000. Uh, there's $56,000 for architectural and engineering design uh, fees. Uh, after the Athletics Facility Subcommittee meets tomorrow, uh, we believe that there'll be a, some sort of a consensus or recommendation coming forth from the committee to uh, give to the board. Uh, we didn't have a quorum the other day, but a consensus of the people that were there, and again, it was not unanimous was to move forward uh, and seek some additional funds, potentially seek some additional funds for architectural engineering design plans so that we could go out to bid and then uh, have a, an actual figure as to what the uh, facility would cost and then come back to the June town meeting um, for construction uh, costs. Uh, we have invested uh, pretty much all of the $50,000 uh, that was appropriated for uh, the design phase what it was supposed to bring us to um, and we think that uh, it would be unwise to just throw it aside again as one of the proposals uh, not proposals but one of the uh, avenues that we could uh, pursue is to spend additional funds for additional designer services to evaluate other options <coughs> um, but again that would be spending additional funds and pretty much abandoning the plan that's being put forth and recommended. So uh, it's, it's somewhat of a quandary. Um, we do not have a formal vote at this particular time. Uh, if I were to guess, my guess is that there will be a, a recommendation uh, to request additional funds for designer services so that we can put this out to bid so that we get a more accurate figure as to what the facility will cost. And then we can make a, a fully informed decision for construction purposes in June. Um, but that consensus is not there, or the vote is not formally there probably until tomorrow. Um, I have a the question I have was, 
the fifty thousand dollars was that in originally intended to create an actual design that we could go out to bid on? I think uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I, my expectation when I um, identified a, a starting when I identified a budget estimate for the phasing of the project was that it would be able to include <coughs> that. But again, we've gone through an, an, a, more, a much more extensive evaluation process than I think anyone in, in, th th that I necessarily anticipated as we started to look at options beyond the initial discussed option of renovating the existing facility um, to create the, the, the bathroom space that was needed. So we, we've absorbed much more of that funding uh, in evaluating the options than I think we initially expected to. And again, the Do we have an estimate, Steve, of how much more money we need? Uh, well, I guess it's somewhere between forty-five and fifty-five thousand dollars, which is pretty much what the uh, construction plan calls for. Now, this also uh, includes um, approximately twelve thousand dollars for for construction, uh, administration, oversight, administration, and oversight. So probably forty-five thousand dollars. So when we get through, we're spending a hundred grand to get a design for this thing to put it out to bid, which is. Pretty much Seems what a little high. And again, the original fifty thousand dollars that was proposed was at a best estimate as to what we felt it would take to construct. So we didn't have any concrete building, so to speak. Hmm. We had a concept, and then putting our, our heads together, the administration and, and the subcommittee thought, okay, fifty thousand dollars would be a realistic figure to go out and get us what we needed to get. But as the design evolved uh, the project is beyond the scope of just retrofitting uh, the existing facility and uh, required additional work on the part of the architect to get us to a plan other than and again the, the initial uh, the initial task that they were given were to take a look at the, the retrofitting That's we came so up would with this it. additional money come off the total Price in the end, we would expect that it would be within the six hundred and fifty-two thousand dollar appropriation. We're just spending the money up front. This proposal, this proposed budget here, would include bringing it to bid, getting the design plans so they could be put out to bid, and then also oversee the uh, construction phase of the project. So basically, spending <coughs> that fifty thousand, or fifty-two, or fifty-six thousand, the majority of that, to get it to put out to bid, so we can get a real number. Prisco, did you have your hand up? I didn't, but I, I do plan to ask a question, but it was Kate that had her hand up. I was oh, going to go after her. By the way, I just want to say up front that uh, uh, Mel uh, Webster, who's the chairman of the Athletic Facilities Subcommittee, apologized for not being here, but again, is involved with the school committee yeah, meeting we uh, this evening. Yeah. Kate? Three questions. Can you flip to that slide that shows the uh, picture? Kate, they can't hear you. You have to speak to the mic. I apologize, but the folks in the crowd can't hear you. All right, I just, I'm just, so fifty thousand dollars is that what resulted from that? And then the other few times that they, I think, the last okay. it was quite a bit of time ago. We had three different plans we had that three were different plans uh, with uh, at least two or maybe three different locations and iterations of it, and different sizes and square footage. So what more would we be paying for? What other iterations are we going to pay for with another fifty thousand dollars? You would bring the plans to design specifications so you could go out go out to bid for it. But don't we have to decide on just we have to decide on the design before we go out to bid with it? Right. How many more designs are we going to the, review? The athletic facility subcommittee has landed on this design and charged the architects to get to this point. And over the last what, four to six weeks, uh, told them to just focus on this, nothing else, and this is where we're this is where we're at. So, so essentially, that the other options that we reviewed are off the table altogether. Unless the, the, those we, were paid for too, and, right? By that fifty thousand dollars. Unless we're going to appropriate additional funds to bring those plans. To this level and beyond um, and just I know we've talked about this probably a number of times but the need is to put bathrooms in and we're under a deadline to do that right and the deadline what? right appears to be somewhat flexible in the state eyes knowing that 
we are in the process of it. We are expending money. We are looking to address the issue. And so, so we our, agree that they would be willing to give us an additional time waiver to come into compliance. So this is four, four questions. But so we're, we're um, not going to be financially fined or penalized for not having this done at this point, in Correct. other words. Do we have a sort of a deadline where, where that could be possi could possibly occur? Do we know? Or? We haven't I mean, heard of any threat from them in relation to I mean, the, the, the I mean, the building inspector is here this afternoon. He, you know, from the conversations I've had with him, my understanding is they want to see us making progress more than anything. They want to see us working towards getting this done. And that based on the timeline I discussed, I, I do believe that we would be able to conduct construction activities this construction season, which was the, uh, the stated goal. Um, you know, again, going beyond the June town meeting, then it would become a little more challenging. But I think Jim knows better than I do. Yeah, as long as the project continues to move forward, I mean, if it was to come to a stop and all funding was stopped and a year went by, then you might be into that fine thing from the uh, state. But as long as it continues to move forward like it has been, they're okay with it. Ben? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the last of income saw the price, it was close to 600000 with for the slab. The, uh, the last <laughs> um, the last price we had seen was uh, six hundred thousand with the with the slab, um, and I saw, and I see some numbers going up. It seems like every time we talk to this company, their conservative estimates go up. Um, what was the reason for the additional, you know, 52000 between this iteration and the last time we saw this? So the changes are highlighted up here uh, on the line here for the foundation, an increase of $12,000. On the line here for the, uh, the, the uh, installed modular building itself, it increased approximately $40,000 to $280,000. If you look here, fixture and utility connections decreased approximately $10,000 and site work projected to increase approximately $57,000. And this is based on the cost estimate conducted during the design development phase of the project. It, it, it just seems to me, I mean, they, when I had sat in, it sounded like those were conserv the 600,000 was conservative, and now it's gone up another 52,000. You are correct that that's what was represented to us. You are correct, and uh, your concerns are, you're not a lonely man standing out there by yourself at all. But it was more like 550. It was 550 plus the add on, 25,000 plus, you know, for the add on for the slab. So it was under $600,000. Is this the same design as the 550? Because there was some question about the, the, the building itself. There were two alternatives that, that she showed the committee in a meeting I was at. And one was. I think a hundred thousand dollars more than the other for the same number of fixtures in it, but it was the design, the shape of the building that was that was. This is the drive, five, driving it. Is this, this is the, the five hundred fifty. This is the, the the less expensive design. Yes. Holy mackerel! Mm -hmm. I, I believe it's. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you weren't done, Don. Build a house. Build a house. So. I know there's a lot of stick of shock in the room. Small buildings are very expensive to build. It is. The bigger the building is, it it spreads out your per square footage cost. But this is a small building, and I think the problem too is the longer we keep waiting and kicking this can down the road, that number is going to keep increasing. I think we need to act, allocate this money now, and. Just basically build a not to exceed number because there's got to be some flexibility here in what you guys have on this sheet because you know, there has to be a lot of conservativeness there. You can't go up $100,000 and get the exact same thing. Uh, I have to assume that our engineer has put some conservative numbers in here to protect us. So I'm going to have to trust that. But I think if we keep waiting, this number is going to go up. And with us, all in consensus agreeing to hold off that four hundred and fifty thousand dollars of free cash. This gives us this is a little over two hundred thousand dollars to put this thing to bed and I think we need to act on it now. I think you wait, you're gonna see this number go up. Jim, 
Yeah. Yes. Um, I do have a lot of reservations with regard to uh, the structure, and more specifically the cost. We have a need basis, which the state has told us that we have to put bathrooms in, X amount of bathrooms. We identified initially uh, in our, the last meeting that I attended that was with the Board of Selectmen, School Committee, and, the, and FinCom, uh, where uh, uh, just before October town meeting, we had to scrap uh, the discussion uh, to discuss this further down the road. I should say table, that's probably the correct way to put it. Um, the need cost at that time was $435,000. And there were not three, but there were actually five suggestions made. And they were separate structures. And I don't know why we really need to consider going beyond the, fi the, the, the need basis uh, structure just because, as the explanation was given, that it was a new building and they didn't want to touch a new building. That was the first explanation given at that time. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there were other reasons given during, your, during the meetings. But I believe we would have solved this problem by now if we had just simply gone to the need basis structure. We would not be having all of these conversations. We would not have wasted the $50,000 and not need to ask for additional $45,000. So I, I just don't know why we're going in the direction of a separate structure just because someone or the school committee doesn't want to put it on, on, on where the uh, locker room is, okay? Uh, it was identified and, and the cost was uh, reasonable. It was mentioned that there were funds available to cover that if, if we wanted to. And now we're up to $802,000 if you add, as I think uh, Mr. O'Leary mentioned to me at the last meeting that it probably would take another hundred and fifty thousand dollars to put in the uh, the snack shack. I don't know if it's going to be a restaurant or a snack shack. I'm not, I'm not sure right now. Uh, but so it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars more. That so wasn't that's that's that wasn't that included in the in the four thirty five four thirty seven. I know that. I know oh, that. Okay. I know that. That that that's where I'm going with this. So we're talking about this structure here. On the outside, it's going to wind up costing us about $802,000 if you go down the road and somebody approves the snack shack to be added to that slab that we're, we're adding to the, the, the uh, structure. So that's $367,000 more than I believe we need to spend on something we can have for $435,000. Uh, $435, and I agree with Mike, we shouldn't be kicking this thing down the road. We got, need to make a decision. But I really think the decision is to take the current structure, <coughs> build, put, build the bathrooms around it as designed, and make sure that we stay within a reasonable cost. Because it's an awful lot of money. There are a lot of things we can do with $367,000. There are departments around, around uh, here uh, that uh, could use that money. Even the school, that could help w with their situation as well. So I, don't, I, I agree, we should not be kicking it down the road. I think that we show $435,000, that's the ticket item. Give or take a few, I, I can be flexible, give or take a few, and just build it, let the state know we're ready to move and we're done. So I, I just don't know why uh, we need to have a separate structure. Okay. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. Just, just to clarify, the position of the athletic facility subcommittee again uh, the initial one of the initial proposals was to convert the existing team room you know and retrofit it to make it comply with the state requirements however in doing so it disrupts the uh, 
first of all, the purpose of the, the original purpose of the tea room and building, as it was designed and laid out and, and situated on the site. Uh, two, in order to do that, it, um, from a, a traffic flow, and I mean people traffic flow standpoint, uh, it doesn't work well as far as the administration was concerned, the school administration, uh, they thought about it, contemplated it. Obviously, they're as sensitive about the, uh, the expenditure as anybody else, uh, but it just wouldn't functionally work in addition to the fact that they would lose a significant amount of storage area, which is uh, currently utilized within the, uh, the current structure. And you would then end up putting modular-looking <laughs> units uh, on the site, which again is unsightly. We just got through, you know, completing a you know, $123 million school project, and all of a sudden, you know, within two or three years, we're, we're locating some modular units here. It, that, that doesn't sit well with a lot of people either. So, from a functional standpoint, in, in the administration's eyes, it, it, it would not work well. Uh, they were not advising it. Uh, they were not advising us to do so. They recognized that the cost was uh, significantly more, but you know this is a structure which is going to serve uh, the community for you know several generations to come. So it, instead of being short-sighted and doing the, the cheapest way out, uh, we didn't think it was in the best interest of the community to do so, and the athletic facility subcommittee uh, concurred. So. Uh, there isn't anybody on the Athletic Facilities Subcommittee that, that isn't concerned about the price and the cost, and uh, which is why you're probably going to get a proposal to you know put it out to bid so that we get a real number so we can go, go to the market with it and find out what it's really going to cost to build the structure. Um, so it wasn't done in a vacuum. Uh, it wasn't done without a lot of uh, thought, and obviously uh, a significant amount of time and resources were expended to explore what the most viable option was in order to meet the state requirements, but also meet the future needs of the site in the school department and recreation moving forward. You know, in relation to the, you know, adding in what the uh, concession stand costs were, or will be, uh, will be in the future, um, the Athletic Facility Subcommittee uh, basically said, we're not going to worry about that, other than we'll allow for a foundation to be poured for a future date, uh, there'll be a location already picked out, but uh, recreation and the school department and the uh, support groups that, that raise money through that uh, concession stand will have to work around it, you know, uh, in the future until some other solution comes forward. But at least it's cited, we know where it's going to be. Uh, there will be infrastructure within this structure to uh, allow for uh, waste disposal and water and electricity uh, should future expansion take place. And that's all in there. So the actual cost of the uh, concession stand later on will actually be minimalized because all the uh, infrastructure will already be in place for it. So, uh, and again, it's uh, not an easy thing to come forward uh, with this type of a proposal, but again, we're trying to look uh, more long term. Uh, again, I think the, the design works. Uh, I think the, the, the uh, pause that we have right now is the estimated cost that we have before us, and I think the majority of the Athletic Facilities Subcommittee uh, truly believes, uh, based upon our experiences, with many of us on the uh, Secondary School Building Committee, some of us in the building trades and businesses, uh, believe that it's going to come in at, at less than what's being proposed here. But the only way to find that out is to bring it to uh, the design phase so we can put it out to bid and see what the market uh, tells us the actual costs are going to be. Mr. I, uh, you know, personally, wanted to see us build the bathrooms in the existing building primarily because of the cost and I've given a lot of thought about it and of course I know what the position of the uh, school committee has taken but putting that aside uh, the idea of placing the bathroom where the athletic uh, steering committee has pointed out uh, serves more than one purpose serves the purpose of uh, not only the football field but the baseball field. I think, uh, you know, looking at this as a big facility, doing it right it means, you know, locating it in the right location. The other factor is, and part of the cost here is that, you know, we could put up a cheap wooden building, but just like the existing session steam it's not going to last forever and I think we have to look at 
our investment there is a long-term investment, not a five or a ten-year investment, but a fifty-year investment. And uh, I still think the price is high. Uh, I don't disagree with the concept of let's finish the design. I'm a little concerned that we've already spent fifty thousand dollars and we, we need another almost fifty to get to where we ought to be to go out to bid. And then we can't lose sight of the fact that, well, this is a municipality. We have to pay the prevailing wage. We have to go through all these hurdles. And what seems to be some outside contract that could build bathroom slot in a private location, it's going to cost us, instead of one-third more, maybe twice as much because, as Michael Prisco has pointed out, it's not a big project, but it's big enough to you know, meet all these requirements. So I think at that point, uh, uh, we, we probably don't have any choice. Uh, I like the idea of getting a full schematic, go out and get a number, and then bring it to town meeting, even if it delays getting this done by another six months or even a whole year, it doesn't matter. Let's get it done right. Rita has got a hand up. Yeah, the goal would be go out to bid shortly uh, have the number for June and actually we may be able to still capitalize on the uh, upcoming building season. Reader. You've got to get to a microphone, Rita. <coughs> Podium will do. Rita Mullen, 29 Abbott Road and a member of the Athletic Facilities Committee. Uh, one of the things that uh, you brought, keep bringing up the 400 and some odd thousand, this, we got one quote when we bid this out for this design firm to come in and do it. They're certainly not the biggest, they haven't done the most of them. They came in and they bid at $50,000 for it. One of the first things that we asked them from the Athletic Facilities was to look at the building. Is it possible to add the, build, the bathrooms to that building or do it another way? The n first number that they came in at 432,000 has not been looked at again for that because of two reasons. One was they did go back to the people that built the school and asked them what would happen. And it's a very good possibility that you would lose the warranty on that building if we did anything. The second time, the second question was, I asked the company CBI, I said, would you recommend doing that? And their answer was, we came in at $50,000. One of the things you asked us to do is tell us what that number would cost. The same, within two weeks of that same meeting, when they came and what finance said is they originally heard numbers that, uh, other numbers for the buildings at almost 480, 580, around that point, and those were bigger buildings. Those numbers have gone up dramatically, and finance is right. Every time we've got a quote, it has come in higher and higher and higher. So I believe that you would not be able to do it for 432, and both that C CBI and the firm that did the school has said they would not recommend it, and you wouldn't have warranties on it. You don't know that was their first number. If we asked them to look at it today, just like they've inflated all the other numbers, I believe that number would also go high. So to believe that we can do it for 432 is not because we're still using the same design firm that feels that, you know, that these other numbers have gone up. The other option is tomorrow at the meeting we could vote to table this and get a peer review group to come in and look at it and maybe come up with some different number. There are a couple other options. I don't think we should get into all of it tonight because to be honest with you, it's going to be dis discussed tomorrow at that meeting. Uh, there's a chance it could be tabled, there's a chance they could go on. I was one of the descending votes, and I, I have a concern that to use the same firm that at this point, for $50,000, they may have thought they were only giving us two ideas, and there were a lot of other things that came up. So they were the only firm that said they'd do it. Not saying they're good, bad, or indifferent, but maybe the scope got a little bit bigger because the first thing that they gave us was a, a quote on where we could put the, the, uh, the building. And they made, they did a very good job on part of their funds th that they spent to say what's underground and where it could go. But some of the things they thought, we could do it here, we could do it there, we could do it there. They realized there were uh, a lot of uh, the water pipes, the gas pipes and everything else.
that there are only so many places that you can put it. <coughs> it's not an easy site to do. And we you know, could go back to stick built. You could go back to building a, a startup. But every time other ideas have come up because their prices kept going up, instead of us coming up with a cheaper way to do it, it kept going up. So tomorrow we're going to discuss it at the meeting. We could decide to uh, table it. We could decide to go to a peer review group and see if it's less money than $50,000. But at some point, Stephen's right, you're going to have to spend some of that money that's built in there. Uh, some of us feel that the numbers should come a lot cheaper than that. And you know, maybe we, it was, uh, we went into it thinking that we could get it cheaper and with one group bidding it. They're telling us what the, they think is the cheapest way of doing it. It's disappointing to see that the numbers keep going up. So hopefully we'll have a chance to vet it better tomorrow and come back with some more news before your meeting. We have a chance to you know, pull it or decide to go forward with it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a recommendation, Mr. Chairman, yes. that we maybe put the um, public hearing on hold until Thursday night to hear this subject again Thursday night since we're going to be together. We're already I'm gonna not be that interested in adding anything to a Thursday night agenda. Well, they're meeting tomorrow, and we don't want to go and have this debate on town meeting floor. Well, no. but my, my recommendation to the board at this particular time is to hold off our recommendation on this article until town meeting. And between now and town meeting, you know, there'll be more information forthcoming uh, from the athletic facility subcommittee and recommendations and the board's going to have to make some difficult decisions as to, uh, you know, depending upon what the athletic facility subcommittee uh, recommends, you know, whether it's appropriate additional funds for architectural design to bring it to, to bid or pull it or uh, look at a whole other different design and aspect of it which would require more funds, you know, for architectural and engineering design. Um, between now and March 13th, uh, you know, may very well determine what the recommendation of this board is going to be. So, you know, uh, to me, um, there'll be plenty of public discussion uh, this board, in front of this board, maybe as soon as Thursday night. Uh, we'll certainly forward the recommendation to the board members as to what comes out of the meeting tomorrow, and then uh, we'll move forward from there. So, I, I don't think we really need to continue the, the public hearing on the article. Okay. But the discussion, public discussion, will continue to take place, certainly. Yeah, we won't make a, a decision on a recommendation yeah, so tonight. Uh, well, yes. Just one more question. Town, to the town administrator, if you don't mind. What's your recommended, what's your recommendation for funding this, regardless of what the number's going to be? The recommendation that I've previously made, uh, which at this point in time remains unchanged, was the utilization of free cash in the amount of $450,000. And that did any uh, any cost above that amount that we would look to uh, to borrow. And that's the recommendation that, that I've made. Again, whether that borrowing happens within or outside of the annual capital improvement plan is a, an item that we're going to need to discuss. But uh, that is my suggestion. So, with that said, would it be unreasonable of the board of selectmen to just <coughs> make a determination of a not to exceed number, and then leave it into the athletic subdivision? subcommittee's hands to figure it out. Yeah, go build it. I the, mean, the, I just think we don't have a choice. I think that's the best path for us to take. Yeah. And you're going to have to that make it fit. That was the path I was suggesting several months ago, but you know, where we are right now, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure. I think right now we're so far along with this that we've expended $50,000. I think it, uh, the most cost-effective way would be to move forward with additional funds to get it to design stage and we can put it out to bid and find out what the real number is. Uh, and, and again, uh, like Rita, I believe it's going to come in less than what's being proposed right here. Um, so then we should be more than willing to do a not to exceed. And then we get this off our plate. Michael, I have a question regarding the article as it's printed. Yes. Do we have uh, within the four corners of the way it's written? Uh, can we acquire money for design? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. And we've reviewed that with the. Uh, we've made the moderator aware that that's a possibility. Uh, yes. 
I know uh, I know sure what everybody else in finance. But I myself lean told Jeff's idea that we go for the simple route, we modify the existing structure. And when we're talking free cash or an extra two hundred and fifty or extra three hundred thousand to get a separate structure, that's a lot of money that the town can use for other budgets. And I think we're better off going a less expensive route. Yeah, we're not we're not talking about that much more significant because what happens is you're not getting a concession stand with the conversion of the other building. So you're getting bathrooms for bathrooms here. Yes. And, and, and the preliminary number was like four hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars and that was very early on yeah. without any uh, significant design. Uh, you're probably going to have to spend another forty thousand dollars to get it to bid uh, as far as the design phase at least forty thousand dollars maybe yeah, probably forty thousand dollars based upon the number uh, to get it to those specifications uh, to bid and uh, now where are you at? You're really talking about potentially, uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollar difference. I, I believe the difference is closer to a quarter, quarter of a million. No, no, I mean, no. Why would that? We're what? talking six hundred and seventy-nine thousand. Uh, I don't know if that includes the uh, concrete site, but we're talking four hundred and thirty. Well, four hundred. Let's say four hundred and sixty thousand. It's going to be modified from the four thirty-two. But like I think we're talking about a three hundred thousand difference, and <coughs> free cash isn't free. I mean, that's money that can be used elsewhere in the budget. I think that I, yeah, I, I kind of like the idea of uh, going to uh, the March town meeting, get additional money to get a complete design, to go out to bid and tackle it at our June town meeting in terms of. Fin financing it at that point, if in fact the numbers are too high, right? I'm hearing that there's an anticipation that those numbers are, you know, the estimated numbers that we have to date are high. Right? We can make another decision. Right? Along you cost more you money go because we're going to have a design for or something else. Right? Something else, but that's an option that we have. You spend if they go to design, they have to go with one of the options though, right? So that if, if they go to design, they're going right. to design no, the building with the slab. Understood. So that would get us back to the option B. And then uh, I just have a couple more questions that maybe Rita can ask. Is is it factual that we would lose the warranty on the building, on the existing team structure? I mean, is that <coughs> a fact? But will, will we, if we modify the existing team building, are, are we gonna lose the warranty on that building? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I, I remember the 432 number has that's not, that's right. the first number they gave us when we all sat here and heard right. other numbers. Yeah, there were 30,000 off from that. So that 432, if they ever, if we paid them to do it again, is going to come back to the yes, same number, uh, to a lot higher. So we're not talking 432, 680. Just, I, I don't Mr. Well, earlier. Okay. I don't remember the secondary school building committee, yes, Mr. Kelleher is. I mean, that structure has been now standing there for two two plus years, two and a half years. Uh, most of the warranties are up already on, uh, on that yeah. structure and any of the infrastructure that, that's within them. Uh, the ones that are maybe in a state of flux are things that uh, uh, maybe have been called into question or have problems with in relation to some cracking in the building right. and things like that. Other than that, the, the functional uh, warranties for wastewater treatment and all the rest is long since expired. I, I think you're probably right. I do have a question to follow up on something you said on the 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 432 or 50 or whatever, whatever it is. Doesn't that number include the cost to put the project out to bid? Wasn't that an all-in cost of the of the of the yes. deal? Yes. And that would have been if that were the proposal, it would have been spent within the fifty thousand dollar appropriation that we already made. But we did not go forward, so we're going to have to bring those plans forward at an additional design cost to get to bid stage on that particular proposal. We're only at the very beginning stages, uh, schematic design stage of that proposal. You're not anywhere near as oh, you're, no. you're not anywhere near where you need to be. They're not bid No, no. So again, you know, 
our hope was this fifty thousand dollars would be incorporated into whatever it was but what happened was we had so many different options and proposals to look at uh, and again in defense of this uh, architectural firm uh, it was like trying to herd cats for them in relation to what proposal do you want me to do for you you know you tell us what you want us to design we'll design it for you and we had five or six different iterations of, of designs uh, in different areas and locations uh, that they had come up based upon our requests. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, as they looked at different designs and locations, there were different uh, mitigating factors as to how and why we ended up where we are. Uh, but in relation to that first proposal, or I don't know, Plan B, whatever it was going to be, Plan A, Plan <coughs> B, uh, of retrofitting that uh, that room, you're just at uh, very basic design plans here. So you're going to have to spend pretty much all of what you would spend on that project, and if it's 10%, you know, you're talking $45,000, $43,000 to bring it to bid. I, I just don't remember the details. Yeah, above and beyond. I mean, sure. Uh, that, that's to build your building, including all the yeah. design plans. But all oh, we have a schematic design at this point. We have no, we haven't got any plans close to being able to put out the bid on that proposal. I just thought they were they were giving us a an estimated cost on delivering that building to us, uh, delivering the the additions to the the current uh, team room to us. And if that was the case, and as I say, I'm not I don't have the thing with me, nor do I remember the details of it. I would expect that 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 estimate that they gave us would have included the cost to do whatever you need to do to produce bid documents, but maybe I'm wrong. Right, but that, just look at it this way. We've already spent $50,000 and it wasn't in a very small portion that was spent on that proposal. Oh, I understand yeah. that. I mean, yeah. it was the, the, the iterations and let's go back and do something else and let's go back and do something else. And I'm not at all surprised that we've blown through the $50,000. Right. I mean, the architect just goes back to their shop and draws, draws up some other stuff. And they're again, not doing you know, it for nothing. They weren't necessarily telling us what we should be doing. They were responding to what oh, we asked them I to do. I understand that. I understand that. And again, it's part of the uh, concern was that some individuals believe that the architect should have been help guiding us as to what we could do and how we could do it a little bit better than or more than what we got. Mr. Yule. Yes. Um, We seem to be in a spot right now that uh, regardless of what structure we do, we have to go back and go for a plan design. Is that correct? Regardless. I mean, we spent all the money. So <coughs> we've, what, October, November, December, January, February? So March, six months ago. Um, we've been in order talking to for to six be, months. We're going to have to spend some more so money. We have to, you know, even if we went to the original structure, we'd have to spend money, exactly. additional money, okay? So that, that's pretty much a constant there. Uh, it's unfortunate that we have to do that because, as I said earlier, I think that we would have been uh, done with this deal a long time ago. Um, but the, 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 other, the other thing is, we're not really talking about $652,000 or less, even if it comes under that. Because if we go with this structure, we're making a commitment to the snack shack. No. That's what no. we're doing. No, we, we are. It's, we're it's there. To, we're committing to allowing for a location to be. You have a slab there attached, correct? What's that? There's going to be a slab attached. Twenty-five. That's a that's an add-on. That's an add-on. Okay. Add so that's so an add-on for approximately twenty-five thousand so, dollars. So so if if we if we don't go with the snack shack, then we just spent twenty-five thousand dollars for nothing. Correct? So a it's a, there's a commitment there by doing this. Is it a commitment or is it an opportunity to, to build out at a cheaper cost? Oh, I, I, I think it turns out to be a commitment down the road. But that, that, that's, that's an opinion, so but we can that, leave it at that. And that's an add-on. So. Okay. All right, it's an add-on. But, it, so it doesn't so we're really, but we're really talking down the road. This whole unit's going to cost us approximately $800,000. No matter how you look at it, if we do it, well, if we commit that, to yeah, it, it's, that's, that's going to be the result. Jeff. Let's, let's keep it to what we're at, what they're well, asking for. <coughs> that's not appropriate. Problem. No, I'm sorry. I don't see that as being appropriate simply because, all right, we're making a commitment. We're saying that we're going to add an extension to this, to this building so we can add a snack shack. 
and that costs money, and it's going to cost money down the road. So, you know, you break it down piecemeal, it's still going to be, in the end, going to be the same extra cost. Yeah, now, $900,000. Uh, also, <laughs> with regard to the Snack Shack, I mean, the, uh, the original structure, had we, had it been approached that, okay, we have a need and we have a want, and let's see how they play off of each other, and let's see what the costs are. And I, it's fair to say in six months, maybe the, the, the estimates would go up on both, but I think the extrapolation would probably be about the same. So there still would be a savings going with the um, uh, current structure. So I, I think it just progresses that that way. All right. So what I what I think you know well the, the warranty issue has been answered, correct? There, there's no warranty. Sorry, I don't think we'd be overly concerned right. with that. Okay. I, I, okay. I didn't think so. All right. So so this is what we have to think about. We're, we're, we're going to. No matter what, we're, we're like in a snowball situation. We're spending more and more and more and more, all right? And it's not going to end until that snack shack gets put in there. No. no. Yeah, that, that's what's going to happen. Uh, it may not happen I, I in 18, disagree. it may happen in 19, it may happen in that's 20, but somewhere along the line, it's Jeffrey, towards the, Jeffrey, the project so. plan is as follows. Just build bathrooms to this plan to put a slab in and have the appropriate plumbing. Correct extension set so that at some future time right. a snack shaft can be built. Right. The snack shaft could be paid for by volunteers on the outside. They could, you know, they raise money for something like this. It's not part no. of this article at this point in time. Well, this is this is I, what's being proposed and recommended. And the further recommendation this evening that I've heard maybe subject to change is that it's if it isn't the consensus, it's close uh, regarding the uh, athletic subcommittee that uh, they uh, request for the March meeting the additional money to get to a complete design or a bid to get to a bid package. They can go out and get it, final numbers and ask for those numbers in the June town meeting. Well, I, From my perspective, that's the right thing to do. So why why are we not? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Uh, why are we not looking at both? Why are we just going down one path, and, and it's a misguided path in my estimated, because we're going down one path, we're, we're committing ourselves to, to having to spend X amount of dollars without looking at a need versus a want basis. There's, right now there's $217 difference, okay, between, uh, uh, between the, the 435 and, and the uh, uh, 652. It's 217 thousand dollars. There are departments in this in in this town that can use those funds. All right, and it's and it's going in the wrong direction because we have other costs that will save us money. I think there was an example: the DPW uh, only buying three salt uh, the, uh, attachments for the salt spreaders to save us money. All right, they wanted to keep it under 25, but they need five. So this money could cover that. But the other thing is, it's not fair to the taxpayer to spend money like this. All right, this is $217,000 of people's hard-earned money that is going to be spent because we want something, because somebody wants something, not because we need something. And we can't say, we can't go to town meeting and say, the state said we need to do this. Because the can. state didn't say we needed to do this. Mr. They said we needed to do something reasonable. Mr. Okay? Masseri? We need, we need Mr. Masseri? I think the, you know, I, I, I think part of, part of what we're, uh, we're missing here is, is the Athletic Facility Subcommittee also had to move forward with what were uh, legitimate options and when it came to the team room again and when it came to programming when it came to the actual uh, functioning of the of the team room uh, its intended purpose and what it was designed and built for uh, what was suggested significantly alters that and the school committee unanimously took a position of saying we're not willing to, to do that yes it's cheaper okay but it doesn't fit the programming needs and designs that that it was to designed and built for in the way that it was laid out and located. 
Um, some of us accepted that, some of us didn't, but it's a matter of fact. So why would you go and spend $40,000 on, on design plans, you know, to bring it to bid when you can't do it? You know, so we had to move forward. Well, we can't do it. I mean, we don't have access to the facility. If the school committee and the school department will not release it for the purposes of redesigning, reconstructing it, for the purposes of putting in bathrooms in there, and again, altering the entire design that it was just built two and a half years ago for, uh, it's not available. So then what it happens? It's not available. You what have happens? to find another alternative in order to meet the state mandate of having bathrooms yeah. down there at that facility. Well, by, That's all. by your point, the day they won't allow it, the consequences is they shut down the football field. All right? And that would be on the responsibility of the school committee because they don't want it on their, they don't want it on that building. But and that's their decision. And then that's something that they would have to do. But decision impacts everybody's inability to move forward in addressing the issues that the state say we have so to So why address. should we have So this therefore, we move forward and we move beyond it. Why should we have to spend more money because of their wants? It's not I, wants. I just don't. It's I, not wants. It's a want. No, it's, no, it's a, a need. <coughs> Jeff, uh, Michael and Catherine. Uh, no, I, to we have to be clear on this, Jeff, because you can't keep saying it's a want. Nobody wanted to do this. No one. We are required to do this. Okay? The decision we made with the schools forced us into this decision. We lose the old school. We lose the bathrooms. It, it just happened. We can't turn a blind eye to it. It's not a want. you got to stop saying it. Okay, and the school building, if they don't want to release it, they have that right. And for us sitting here arguing about it, we're just wasting a lot of time. And that 435 number you keep talking about isn't a real number. That's we know that, everyone knows that. You can't keep using that number. It is so old, it doesn't even make sense anymore. That number 435 is probably more like 535. So at the end, when you buy something for 535, you're not going to get the most utility out of it when you can, when we're talking about buying something here around 600 for a little bit more money, you're going to get far more utility out of it. And this whole thing you have, this issue with the concession stand, it would be so foolish of us not to spend a little extra money to build the infrastructure in, in the pad for future use. Because everyone knows we are, need a concession stand. You cannot provide those services without a concession stand down there. So it would be foolish of us to just delete that from this project the infrastructure it's cheap money it's pennies on the dollar doing it now during the original build than trying to go back there and digging all that infrastructure in later on um, I would be in favor of capping it and uh, and I would not be in favor of these figures at all because we blinked our eyes and this went up in one month's time hundred and ten thousand dollars and if you can Sorry. flick back to that can you do you mind flicking back to the right there if you actually just take the cost for the modular building that's going to be purchased and placed, just the building alone, it went up $40,000 in, again, one month's time. And if you just take that 280 plus 40,000 divided by 624 square feet, it's $512 per square foot for a modular building. And then it, they're taking that, out. That's what the fixtures do. They're taking out the ten thousand dollars from their seven thousand dollar estimate. These are these are wildly varying figures in the blink of an eye. So I would not be in favor of dumping any more money into design. You have six hundred twenty-four square feet. We know where it has to be situated. We've looked at we've looked at all the other designs that were. There were four, at least four that we looked at originally. We were told there was a different designer on now, and now I think I just heard it's the same designer giving us these figures. And I have zero confidence <coughs> that these are even accurate. So I wouldn't be in favor of just, let's do the 652, 450 out of free cash, bond for the well, rest, well, or whatever else it takes, and another 26,000. Let's cap it. Is it cap interesting it. that the building uh, the uh, athletic committee has come to the same conclusion, not necessarily to cap it, but to uh, just ask for enough money to get a bid package out. Because out they don't believe the, the numbers either. Put it out to the marketplace to find out what it's going to cost. 
I, I, I'm not recognizing reader at this point. I'm well, what's your bid finish. package? Give us X amount of bathrooms for 624 square feet. We're going to place it here. What's the and, and we want you to do all the utility. Can I, what's the bid pack going to say? This is this information. Here's the spot. Give us the give us your bid bid figure. So why are we paying more money to do that? To go out to bid. We did fifty thousand fifty thousand dollars? Drawing. This is a schematic drawing of a location and a size. It it doesn't include all the nitty gritty, gritty the pump station, the power the plumbing, everything that's required as part of the bid package to come up with the price. I'm just, isn't that what the fixture utility connections is? For 170, right. now it's another 57,000. Yeah, but you don't believe that number. I really don't, no. Yeah. But we know what we need. That those numbers are we know <laughs> We know where it's going. We know it ha what has to be connected because we already looked at that those specs before. So why do we have to spend another $50,000 for the same information? Well, I asked the same question. I, I assume it's got to do with putting the detail bid package together, uh, make the, all the drawings and all the detail required for the project. That's correct. It's to take, $50, take the completed design development, which is the phase that we're at right now, and advance it to being a a bid package as required under Chapter 149. That's what that what that would include. Now, if we go back to the school project, right? They had a schematic design. They they went out and made estimates based on a schematic design, and they got the 40 percent, 60 percent complete drawings. You talk about the school building. Well, I'm just giving you an example of what happened. Yeah. Right. I don't think there's much that to, they they can to, be done in 624 square feet. They made their estimates feet. based on. They made their estimates based on schematic design. And, and in the end, it was under, they needed more money. In this case, I think these people got very conservative because they, they don't want to give us an estimate that we find out is going to be too low when we go out to bid. Right? Like but we, we don't have the project. documents to go out to bid. We That's the second part of this. Now, I assume when we. I initially put the fifty thousand dollars out, we would get a bid pack. Finished product, yeah. but we've gone through several different gyrations of starting here, there, and everywhere. That we've obviously blown through that money. Hey, Mr. Missouri, if I just add one quick thing, when you build a bathroom, it is, it is a very expensive thing to do. You're talking every stall has fixtures in it, right? has the structure itself. So even the bathroom in your own home is probably, the kitchen's the most expensive and the bathroom's the second most expensive. So it, I know it's hard to wrap your head around that number. I'm not so sure I believe it 100% either, but bathrooms are expensive. We're talking a lot of stalls here, right? I, I, I counted it correctly, is so it 18 or something like that? So it's, if you have to look at it a little differently. It is gonna be more money per square foot because of the fixtures that you have to add for a bathroom. That was just, that's just the cost, just for the, yeah. Just for the building itself. I understand. If you actually See, divide up the total, it's that. more like $1,000 okay. okay. a square foot. It's so you up around 900 right now as a yeah. proposal. Yeah. Steve, it's, it's under thousand in your opinion, based on your participation with the athletic uh, committee, subcommittee, uh, is the recommendation from the committee going to be to ask for additional money to get to the point where we have a completed schematic design of what's being proposed to you. I believe that that's probably what the consensus will be. Okay. Mr. Chairman? So if that's the case, right, unless the board feels strong about doing something very different, it would seem to me that uh, at our meeting, just prior to town meeting, we will be presented with a number recommendation for the <coughs> athletic uh, subcommittee of how much money they would like to put in this warrant to get us to the point where we have schematic design capable of going out to get a bid and we'll have a, a firm bid number that we can deal with at, at our uh, June town meetings. 
So you're talking about that A and E fee fees number is roughly what we're going to see. Uh, I'm talking about like the 56 design, I don't know what the number, you know, those are estimates. I Although that has to be a pretty solid estimate. Yeah. That, that's a no-brainer. It's 10%. <laughs> so they're about, you know, a little yeah. less. That's a no-brainer. All right, Mr. Steve. So your, yeah. so your concept is you sp we're going to go to town meeting just for the sake of discussion. It's going to be a $60,000 warrant article to to, to get the, um, to quote the, the the final design. That's what I'm hearing from, I, I, I guess you're representing the, the general consensus. Co correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, I, I believe that's indication we got. At least. And the big thing is, uh, you know, we, we spent fifty thousand dollars and come to a conclusion as to what facility was, was going to be recommended, in order to get it to a point where we could move on and move forward. We need some additional money, and again, you can put the carpet was, you can try and put it out as you're saying now, and who knows? Uh, or let's get the proposal uh, tied up in a knot here, put it out, and see what the market really is going to. Uh, come back with as to what it's going to cost to build this structure. And you know, to me, I'm not willing to sit here and throw away the $50,000 that we've expended here to come to a conclusion and a recommendation. It's going to cost us more to put it out to bid. So I say put it out to bid and then let's, then we'll know exactly what the costs are going to be. I would not recommend going to town meeting and saying, you know, give me 650 or give me $700,000 to go and go build it. Because we don't have enough confidence right now think that these are okay. overly conservative and we think the marketplace will lower the cost for us and that's what we want to go to town meeting with in June probably uh, June for uh, true numbers to build it Mr. and again Yo. if it comes in crazy you know that we have some other decisions to make Mr. Yo. Yeah. Um, has the committee discussed uh, apparently not it, it would appear not these are men and women bathrooms, correct? Yes. Male and female no. bathrooms, okay. No. Has the committee discussed public accommodation at all? We are building them to current code and requirements. So you're, you would be following Mass General Law 272-92A and 98? I certainly hope so. I hope they design it doesn't all with that, whatever that means. From what, yes. from, what, from, what I'm, from what I'm looking at, the answer would be no, okay. But I, you know, I, again, I have not been to those meetings. I rely on you as a liaison <coughs> to supply us the information. Um, but um, it's very important that that issue be addressed. Uh, it's, a, it's a hot ticket item right now. Uh, the governor is addressing it. Um, and um, the Supreme Court is not. They may not be, no, but they are not. Okay. <laughs> but, but the state. Uh, is is addressing it? Uh, I think Healy, more Healy, is, is it, addressing it. So we need we place. need to make sure that you know is this structure going to conform to that law? I mean, it's it's very important. Okay, if we're going to. I don't want to spend money and find out that that down the road the bathrooms don't are, are not meeting that code. That's general law, and it has to do that. It's a concern that I have. I think it's modular public restrooms that we're buying, that w that the town will be purchasing, so they would have to comply with anything that's, any any law that's effective right now. I, I, I would hope so, yeah. but if they have not had specific discussions of it, then that's a concern that I would have. Well, I'm assuming you're purchasing them from a, a, a vendor that, is experienced with the designer, creation of modular public, yeah, public <coughs> restrooms, <coughs> and public modular public buildings. Well, okay. Well, if you have male and female bathrooms rather than gender neutral bathrooms, all right. If you have gender neutral bathrooms, you solve a problem. And the problem that you solve is well, the no, fear. We have so many fixtures for male and female. That's what's required under the law currently, and that's what's being designed. But does it satisfy public accommodation? That's that's what I'm concerned about. I have, I have more to, to read into this. I just picked it no up today. Less than, no less okay. than the public school we just built. Okay. Well, that's, you've obviously had problems that, that you have to put curtains up now and no, there are adjustments that have to be made. But that what's being schools designed are and what will be built will be in compliance with the law. Well, um, I'm concerned about that. I mean, it's, it's possible that just having uh, 
a single bathroom or a single door built into the structure somewhere, right, to solve the problem. Yes, sir. Sorry. Mr. Schimmel. Yes. Sure. Uh, could you go over to the microphone? Yeah. Thank you. George Chabot, to Ugly Park East. Uh, I have a, a question as to what, I, this is my own ignorance, but what is the consequence of not building the bathrooms first, and what is the requirement as far as deadline when they have to have to be built? Mr. Michael Chairman, do you, I, I would actually ask that the building inspector ref, re, respond to it. He's had the first hand information. The, uh, the, deadline, the, the deadline will continue as long as the town is stopped completely if it was to be able to be thrown out. What the state would do, I don't know. I, I don't know what their fire structure is or what they would force the town to do. But the town would definitely be in violation of <coughs> the state uh, the plumbing code and the state building code. And my understanding yes. is it's tied to the bleachers or the, or the, uh, the stands. That, uh, the, so uh, in the worst the case situation, we wanted to keep using the. Don't field. tell me you have we to shut down an athletic program. No, you have to just take away all the bleachers. <laughs> we have to take away <laughs> the uh, really stands. That's all. Take away the stands. Okay. Well, they could they could pull the variance for one thing, and then you then you'd be back up to 18 stalls for the women, nine urinals for the men, three. I mean, it would be back to what the thousand seat stadium requires. I think at one point we were up to 45 And you'd be up fixtures. to, you know, 2 million. Yeah. Well, I'm certainly pro-education. I supported the school system, as did a lot of the other elderly people in the community, and they're being pretty hit, as everybody knows, pretty hard by the, <laughs> the tax consequences of, of the new school. And the um, at this stage of my life, I'm also very much pro-urination, I guess. <laughs> 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 I'm in favor of bath bathrooms, but I, I, I you talk three quarters of a million dollars. I mean, that's, that's pretty heavy for, for people to take, as everybody realizes, I think. And I think it's incumbent upon everybody involved, the building subcommittee and the, uh, and the selectmen, to, to do, do enough work to convince themselves that they're getting the best deal for the money they can, <coughs> they can expend, expending it, not any more money than is really necessary. I mean, they, we, we uh, the taxpayers, especially I think some of the older people, look at it and say that uh, we're willing to support the system. You have to have the bathrooms, build the bathrooms, but don't build in extra items you don't need. Meet the requirements and fulfill that need. It, I don't think we, we really want to entertain uh, a a luxury, a luxury bath, bathroom if we don't need it. We've built a, you know, maybe not a Cadillac school, but we built a dressed up Buick anyhow, and we, we could go with a high quality Chevrolet, I think, for the, for the bathrooms, if that's a possibility. And I would, I would certainly uh, encourage the selectmen to try to come up with a conciliatory action, at least for the people who are, uh, are being strapped and, and uh, pressed pretty pretty thin in terms of the taxes they're currently paying. This isn't a, uh, a, a this single item isn't going to break the, the backs of most people, I don't think, in terms of the tax, extra tax burden, but uh, it certainly exhibits, if, you, if you're spending more money than we need to, it exhibits an attitude that, you know, we care more about what we, we think we want than what you might need, and it's, it's a, a, a negative, uh, uh, attitude to portray to the to the public and the and especially the some of the elderly who are in need of, of some break. So I I would hope you'd do your best to to offer that <coughs> conciliatory kind of kind of approach at least and, and do your best to minimize the, the cost to, to uh, allow construction of what what we do need and not what we don't need. Thank you. Thank you. Is Rita Mullen still here? Uh, does anyone know what we what we paid for the uh, bathrooms at the uh, park? Yes. What? 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 Oh, sorry. I think. Yes. Yes, please. We 
Maureen Stevens, Op Operations Director of Parks and Recreation. Um, what we paid for the park was $145,000. There's two stalls, there's one women's and one men's, and that included the septic system, the plans, and that was the whole budget, and it was all done with gift funds. Okay. All money from fundraising. So there's only actually two bathrooms. There's only two stalls. Two stalls. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. So what, what does the variance allow us or require us to have there? It reduces the what would have been required, right? It, it reduced it to half. So uh, nine? Yeah, it was suggested when we went in for the variance that the, the, the basically don't insult the public board by trying to get out of the two or three. Uh, they would entertain cutting the numbers in half. And I believe it was 18 women's and uh, three sinks, 18 stalls, three sinks, or four sinks. That went down to nine and two sinks. Same thing on the uh, men's side. Nine. It nine. went from four stalls to two stalls, and five urinals to three urinals. It's down to 13. 13. Thank you. Right Are we ready to uh, move past uh, Article 5? Yes. Okay. Uh, Article 6. Then uh, the zoning <coughs> by law prohibit uses for recreational marijuana establishment. And through you, Mr. Chairman, if the Planning Commission so desires, I'll, I'll start the presentation and then certainly uh, feel free to fill in wherever appropriate. So just as a, re a refresher, this, uh, it was a state ballot initiative approved in November that legalized recreational mar marijuana use and sales in Massachusetts. The law included provisions to allow communities to opt out. Those provisions are expected to be modified by the legislature sometime in the next few months. Approval of the article on the town meeting warrant would ban recreational marijuana establishments in all zones in the town of North Reading. If approved, the selectmen anticipate placing a similar question on the annual town election warrant to be voted on at the ballot in May. Excuse me. <coughs> at this point in time, the so, so a little bit of history for the public, the selectmen requested that the Community Planning Commission craft this warrant article uh, earlier this year, and the Community Planning Commission uh, agreed to do so and has crafted it. Selectmen have made a recommendation to town meeting uh, in favor of this article, as has the Finance Committee, as I understand it. The Community Planning Commission uh, at this point in time has not made a recommendation, has indicated that it would make a recommendation at town meeting. Uh, there was some discussion, I think, at the <coughs> Planning Commission hearing of February 21st, as well as at the Selectman's meeting on February 27th, about the potential for considering a moratorium, <coughs> which would effectively uh, delay any establishment from opening in town rather than a total prohibition. Uh, in response to this suggestion, we began a conversation with the, initially the Attorney General's office, but then the town clerk and town council, and finally the town moderator with regard to whether that would be a, an option for consideration. Mm -hmm. And while it, it's always an option for consideration that a motion be filed to, that's different than what's written in the warrant, it was the opinion of town council that that um, that such a motion to approve a moratorium rather than a prohibition would be out would potentially be outside the scope of the warrant as uh, as was posted and, and mailed to our residents. So, in a conversation today with the town moderator, which the town planner participated in as well, with town council uh, also on the phone, uh, we got a sense from the town moderator that he had uh, he was very concerned that a motion to approve a moratorium. Uh, would in fact be outside the scope of the article as published in the warrant. And that's something he conveyed to us. It certainly was not his final opinion, but uh, it was clear that he was very concerned that folks were, uh, were provided a warrant and were notified that there was a potential that a prohibition would be considered, but not necessarily a moratorium. Uh, one other thing to note from that conversation was that uh, with regard to the, ti the timing, council felt that uh, in terms of what's going on at the state level, there certainly could be an opportunity to consider a moratorium at the June town meeting. 
Um, they didn't feel that that was not a viable option. They felt it was a viable option for us to consider. And they also felt that if it were, in fact, going to be a zoning moratorium, a pure zoning moratorium that would be considered, that no election at the town ballot would be required. <coughs> and I just asked the town planner if I've missed anything from that conversation. No. Okay. So. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So what we're proposing here is, as you recall, if we go back <coughs> to the uh, medical marijuana, uh, I don't remember the exact uh, numbers, but the town voted to support medical marijuana and then the recent ballot the town as a town even though the state voted in support of recreational marijuana the town didn't so the board's position has been to you know follow the uh, majority of the town and to uh, propose uh, basically an article to prohibit use now the what the town administrator was uh, talking about is that even though the recreational marijuana or marijuana law was passed, the legislature is contemplating modifications, making some changes associated with, you know, making the law, I guess, uh, uh, such that it, it can be controlled and so on and so forth. So by doing, by putting this article in and taking action, when we put it in, uh, there's a possibility that the legislature, whenever they get around to putting all the rules together, may make this uh, particular article, may make us have to go back and change it again. And therefore, the thought came up to uh, uh, instead vote <coughs> putting a moratorium on not putting this article in and wait to see what the state legislature would do. But we, as the town administrator uh, said just a few minutes ago, uh, we don't have that luxury because of the language in the warrant. We're not allowed to make modifications outside of the four corners of the article that's been printed and uh, <coughs> published. So, and that we signed off on. So I guess, uh, Mr. Warren, question? Mr. Chairman, comment, and Mr. Warren, Mr. Pierce may speak to this issue as well. But at the last discussion, the board had asked me to convey to the, <coughs> the planning commission its desire to have the opportunity to make the main motion at on town meeting floor, which I did convey to the planner. I'm not sure whether the commission sat and uh, had an opportunity to discuss that yet, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we did convey that. Okay, so we had, we haven't actually had it taken a vote on it, and while we understand the concept, we were a little concerned about the methodology and and that in that when we did the medical marijuana bylaw, we did the moratorium, we took the time to uh, craft a law, which of course passed muster and is now in place in, 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 uh, in, uh, in our town. <clears throat> the concern was that there's really no, there's not really a rush because the original uh, date that the state had set for getting the final rule in place was September of 2017. They extended it by six months now to March of 2018 before they'll even have a final rule. Uh, so the thought was why in, in other towns such as West Bridgewater, I looked at their, what they did with their 18-month moratorium. Uh, they did a good job of it. It passed muster with the Attorney General. Um, and it would give us a chance to make sure that anything that we crafted wouldn't be overturned by a decision by the state to change the rules, which they seem to be uh, bent on doing right now. Uh, so my concern is that you would make a law and then you would, uh, and then the state would, when they came out with the final rule, would uh, basically negate it. Uh, so it seemed to me that a moratorium was the best way to handle it, even if we didn't do it at this particular town meeting, but did it at the June town meeting. Um, we could then have that moratorium give us a chance to see what the final rule is and craft a law that worked within it, because uh, the total prohibition uh, in the in the in this uh, in this state, doesn't they don't totally prohibit too many things, and so I'm I'm a little surprised that they said they were going to do it, and I'm afraid that they'll change their mind in the end. So the idea behind moratorium it means it puts a stop to everything, or everything is on hold, and whatever they come up with for a final decision, we can craft a law that, if we want to prohibit, can still do that within the within the new rules. That's my concern. Thank you, Warren. Mrs. Manapelli, is that a hand up or 
Oh, I mean, I, I think I can appreciate that explanation. And I my understanding of the moratorium, and we've, we've talked back and forth about this, I guess, um, was for planning purposes to to determine the proper area where it could be located, to determine the proper regulations, to determine the how the bylaw should read. This is a different story altogether. This is the um, this is in this is a prohibition of it. So a moratorium serves no planning function here and serves no. Um, we're not considering um, an area to permit it or not permit it. It's more to move forward with what the legislation allows, and that is to ban it within the town. And I think that's quite a distinction from a moratorium, which is for the purpose of giving the town a step back to, to do the planning study or to do the planning review and to do the creation of the bylaw. And I mean, I hear your perspective, but as it was passed, and as as it's as it was passed, and as it's being interpreted, we are we think on the right path, and we're told we're on the right path in terms of banning it. I I I myself heard from a number of people, even though medical marijuana was approved, and even though there's a district, just on that issue alone, um, countless people opposed to the dispensary being located here. So I think there's a bit of a misperception perhaps that because people aren't necessarily opposed to medical marijuana, that it doesn't necessarily translate to you know having it here, there, or otherwise, even though we've allowed it. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly that, that recreational marijuana from the people I've heard with is something they do not want at all, no sales at all in the town. Well, there was an additional consideration here, too, and that is that you require a two-thirds vote for this to pass as a zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. And the moratorium gives you a chance to educate people as to why you want to do that, because you did not, in, in the town of North Reading, it did not uh, fail by two-thirds, if you understand what I mean. And so um, there's a possibility that you might not get your two-thirds vote in that. And the moratorium gives you a lot of time to do more than just plan. It gives you time to educate. <coughs> don't know why it is you want to do what you want to do. Uh, so I thought it through a little further than that. So. Okay, but we, we've been advised that yep. we can't modify this. Mo we can't present a motion. Oh, I, I understand that. I so understand our I options are one of two things. We either ask the town to approve it or we pass it over. I understand that. Um, my intent was to explain why we looked at it this way, so so yeah, um, no, so, I understood. Know, yeah. So that we, so that you could, whatever you do at this town meeting doesn't mean you can't do something different at the next town meeting. Of course. If it looks like it's, uh, for example, if you don't get your two thirds vote, you could still at the next time you do your moratorium, right. give you a chance to do your education, your outreach, mm -hmm. so that you can get your vote. All right, Mr. Chairman. So at this point, there are any other? Yes, Jeff, and then Michael. Yes, um, Mr. Pierce, are you, would you be in favor of this warrant being passed over? Or should, or do you think we, even in light of what you were explaining, we should go through with it? Um, I don't think, I don't, I don't think that would be necessarily necessary because I don't think what you're about to do is going to change things because in a few months you'd be able to to, uh, to put a moratorium on. Instead, if you want to, you can still do that. I think town council told you you could change, you could make another change if you wanted to. So I'm not concerned about whether you pass over it or not. I'm more concerned about what the final result would be if you pass this law and then don't do anything. And the state comes down with a law that says, well, you know, we really don't want to prohibit anything because you're disenfranchising the group of people who are going to complain in the meantime. And so then you would, that would negate your law and now you're back to square one. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to make sure that I'm not misunderstanding something here. I'm, I'm under the impression that we're going to pass a, a, a law of prohibition and a, or by law of prohibition and we're done with it. Am, am, am I, so we're not going to be doing anything beyond what you're suggesting unless... Unless, unless the legislature tinkers with it a little bit too much. Right. So, <laughs> we don't know so, so to Warren's point, 
uh, you know, we spent an awful lot of time on on bathrooms, <laughs> and we're not. I don't know if we put as much time into this uh, for discussion uh, to come up with uh, the best solution. And I think that's what Warren is trying to suggest, that we best put the solution. time into it to, to come up with the best solution. Um, and that usually can only be a good thing, because if we come up with the best solution, then we're going to be pleased with that. It might be more uh, costly. You know. well, the moratorium stops the clock. So you basically, there's no, there's no foul. It stops the clock. And then until, and for the 18 months, and since it's going to take the state, even the state added that they, what they did on December 30th was enact an uh, emergency law. That emergency law was used to extend the time for them to make a decision for another six months. So if the state's in that much of a quandary about what they're going to do, um, it just seemed to me that waiting until they decide what they're going to do to make our decision was, was a good idea. That's the concept behind the moratorium. Mr. Thank you. Prisco, Mr. I know you tomorrow evening you have a public hearing, right? On yes. this subject? We have a meeting. Not Just a, a meeting. We've already got that. Okay. So but the CPC hasn't made a decision on this particular warrant article, correct? <laughs> you haven't voted one way or another? No, we haven't. And again, um, it's because we would we were considering that the moratorium would be a better way to go. Yeah. And I went to your public hearing a few weeks ago and I had asked then and I'll ask again now. If the CPC, if you feel that the CPC is going to vote against this prohibition, that you at least let us know now so the Board of Selectmen can take over the sponsoring of this article. Because I think it would be more appropriate to let someone sponsor the article that's in favor of it rather than someone sponsor the article that's not in favor of it. I just ask you to respect that request. Yeah, that, that's okay. No, I think I indicated to you a minute ago that, that we're not uh, against this uh, article. That's not what it is. It's the methodology, not the concept. I understand. But you haven't voted yet. And I don't know what the majority of your board's going to do. Well, we can so do that tomorrow. I would appreciate it if you could let us know, and then we just if we if if there was an agreement and if uh, if um, the moderator and the town council has said it would be possible for us to bring forth a moratorium at the uh, town meeting, then we would have put our effort to crafting that and supporting it and so forth and so on. But until we got to the point where we found out where you were going to stand, it didn't make any sense to. So we will now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. Mr. O'Leary? Yeah, to, to me, as far as uh, I'm like-minded as far as Kate's comments in relation to it being different than the medical marijuana. Medical marijuana uh, allowed it in every community in, in the Commonwealth. And how we were going to handle that was whether we were going to allow it in certain zones, certain areas, certain types of zoning. Other communities have ignored it and, and ducked, you know, but they they are far more vulnerable than the, than we have been because we instituted a moratorium, see what the final legislation was, and acted uh, yeah. appropriately to control what may become become into our community. In this particular case, the legislation that has been passed <clears throat> allows for communities to opt out specifically, and these were for, proposed by the proponents of recreational marijuana. They gave communities uh, different options as to the number of uh, dispensaries or uh, recreation marijuana facilities uh, that will be in the community tied to liquor licenses. They have a whole host of a laundry list of methodologies that the towns could employ to limit or opt out of the program. Uh, so for the majority of us, or all of us, the majority of us at the time, they said, okay, with the advice of council, council talking with the attorney general, uh, you know, the question was because of the way it was written, you know, is it just a zoning bylaw change at town meeting or does it take a ballot vote? Uh, we were advised to do both. Uh, we consulted with uh, Representative Jones and uh, his office and then Senator Tarr uh, privately and then also publicly here. And both of them urged us to move forward with the proposal that we put forth, which is if we feel strongly enough to uh, propose an opt out, you know, propose it. And that may very well help craft the, the legislature's uh, tinkering with the, with the law where communities have taken advantage of the law as it currently is written with approval with the town, uh, with, excuse me, with the attorney general approving uh, zoning bylaw change and recognizing a ballot question um, 
So you think that if enough, if enough if enough communities opt out, the state? I would think that the take well, first of all, I, I I think the state is I think the legislature is going to have a very difficult time um, tinkering too much with it without a lot of uh, outcry. Uh, so if the and I don't see why the legislature would not allow for an opt-out provision for communities that voted in opposition to it, while the majority of the people in the Commonwealth voted for it. And the initial proposal, the initiative position that was put forth allowed for that to happen. It didn't even say if you voted for, for or against. It's just it's a provision that a community could, could put forth. And to your point, you know, our town meeting for zoning by law change uh, requires a two-thirds vote. So if we get the two-thirds vote, and it's the will of the, uh, the majority of the people in the community at the ballot last November, and the will of two-thirds of the people at town meeting in March, and again, the will of the majority of the people at our annual election in May to not allow for recreational marijuana, why wouldn't we take advantage of that opportunity? Uh, and then have that placed for the legislature's consideration because the chances of that being taken care of in short order probably isn't very good, although they were hopeful that uh, Representative Jones thought maybe by April, uh, Senator Todd thought that was an optimistic timeline. So uh, let's get put on, put on the record. And again, maybe we're reading the community wrong. Maybe, well, no, that, no, you know, and, okay, if do just, and if we do read the community wrong, you know, we'll come, find come March, then we'll, we'll put when the state, moratorium proposal up when for June. the state for goes June. to the trouble to make an emergency law to extend the decision by six months, it that was just because that was okay. for implementation. No, that was implementation because they couldn't get the rules and regulations <coughs> in place in time. That's, that's, at least that's what they're under the guise of. Uh, so, to, so to me, uh, this is a, an easy proposal for, for me as a member of the board to propose uh, the general populace, populace and public to, to come out and express their opinion on. Do you want recreational marijuana in the town of North Reading or not? And the law allows us to, to take that vote. So let's put it forth. If it gets the two-thirds vote, we move on to the, to the May ballot. If it doesn't get the two-thirds vote, then we craft something potentially a moratorium for June and forget the May ballot. So, which we don't even call it a majority. So, uh, to me, I think it's important for us to, to move forward. Uh, I would hope that the, uh, the Planning Commission, uh, Warren, I would hope that the, the Planning Commission would support uh, the article going forward. Uh, and that in the event that it doesn't get a two-thirds vote, then you propose the moratorium bylaw, or, or whatever it would be. And I, I think you'd get the majority support in. Uh, for that. But to me, okay. if there are no other it. comments, I'm going to close the public hearing. Public hearing is closed now as a matter of <coughs> process. Articles 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all related to zoning. Who is presenting them? Is it the CPC? Yes. 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 Okay. They're sponsoring them. Article 5, Mr. O'Leary. Well, who's going to read them? Well, somebody oh, needs Matt. to report them. Mr. The Webster. Yeah. So uh, somebody would need to report the board's recommendation right. with regard to articles yes, one through four. Course. We sign those for one through four. All right, so let's go. Uh, on article one, why don't we just go down the line? Michael, one. I'll do one through four. Yeah, to, to, okay. me, to me it's a package four. deal. Okay, you know, all right. Report. Everyone's in support of that? Yeah. Steve, you will do five. Okay. And. Yeah. No, there's one more. Kate, Kate, or Jeff? Recre recreational. Um, I can do. I can do recreational. What? I can do recreational. All right. If so Jeff is going to do six. And uh, does the board want to uh, make a recommendation now on one? We, 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 Jim and I move to recommend we, Article we, One. We, we, we. We second. actually second. already recommended second. these. We, already re actually, I think we, already recommended we recommended one through four did. and six. Okay, it's just five. five? It's just five that we've I not recommended. Our support for one <laughs> five, we're going to wait. Five, I would recommend that we uh, wait. Hold town, uh, recommendation of town meeting. Town meeting in six. We already recommended that. Town meeting? No, we already recommended that. All right. Are you on this? Yes. 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 I think so. Minutes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just just a point of clarification. So again, for articles one through four, we'll be reporting a recommendation of the board. For article five, we'll be making a motion and a recommendation, presumably. Yes. And then for article six, it may or may not be the motion, but it will be a recommendation. Again, that depends upon whether the planning Quiet commission question. determines to make the main motion or not. Okay. Right. Right. <coughs> so they, Thank you. So even though I'm listed as doing six, 
They may do. They make the motion. You give the board's recommendation. You would right. still do the recommendation, and right? If if they decide not to make the motion, then you'll make the motion. Right. Sorry. Okay. We have the minutes of February 27, 2017, <laughs> regular session. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, I move to approve the February 27, 2017, regular session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. We also have executive session of February 27th. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the February 27th, 2017 executive session minutes as written. I guess I can second that. Second by Mr. Yule. Uh, I do have a question. <coughs> I did leave the meeting at 8.43, so does that mean I have to abstain? I did participate in some of it. Yeah, you can vote on it. You can vote on the fact that you left. Vote till 843. <laughs> <laughs> One motion. All in favor. Uh, Aye. I'm, I'm a half vote. Unanimous. We have legal bills. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for January 2017 in the amount of $19,593.12 as follows. Copeland and Page PC General six thousand seven hundred and thirty-five dollars and sixty-two cents. Copeland and Page PC Labor two thousand seventy-two dollars. J T Berry six thousand four hundred and seventy-five dollars. Nine Mill Street four thousand three hundred and ten dollars and fifty cents for a total of nineteen thousand five hundred thirty-nine dollars and twelve cents. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. <coughs> Opposed? It's unanimous. Is there a motion regarding? Mr. Chairman, there's one more legal bills motion. Yes. Sorry. I move to approve legal bills for Furman Gregory Deptula in the amount of $85,000, which includes between $15,000 to $25,000 to be distributed for experts for their services. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. Discussion? S Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous? Is there another motion regarding? It is, um, it's on the Kenny field, but it's, it's to recommend to pass, recommend. pass the, the we're waiting on that one. Recommend a uh, town meeting. Move to recommend a town meeting, okay. right. That's, that's one year. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend at special town meeting, Article 5, appropriate money for construction of facilities at Arthur J. Kenny Field. I'll second that. Second by Mr. O'Leary. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Aye. Washington uh, Post. Oh, just opposed. opposed. Okay, I'm sorry. Four one. Okay. Uh, he wants to make his recommendation right now. <laughs> uh, sign the purchase and sale uh, with uh, Pool Day Homes. We're passing over that this evening. We will take it up on Thursday night, hopefully. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. So we will start our meeting on Thursday night. Uh, we, uh, we're not going to have uh, cable coverage, correct? Uh, we had not yet contacted NORCAM relative to that. I mean, we can certainly, uh, well, I'm I just guess Well, I'm thinking it, it's just the only uh, item that's not an executive session will be the vote on Pulte. And there will not be any discussion of the town meeting warrant or any of the articles? No, I don't think so. So we're just we're going to sign an update from uh, the athletic facility subcommittee as to what the recommendation is. Will you I have it by then? I'll have what we vote tomorrow. <laughs> It'll just be an update. I will not be looking for a recommendation from the board beyond that. Uh, I'm just thinking that we, we started this uh, meeting off on the 19th to uh, have an executive session only. I don't have a problem with adding some things, but I just think about timing and so on. So again, I think if you want to give a report I think just, to the I board, think just the update will be very brief. This is what the recommendation <coughs> is. Okay. Our plan was to start the meeting at seven o'clock. Right. 
Yeah. I, I wasn't in the room for the planning okay. discussion, so. We'll have, we be. So are you going to do TV or you're not going to do TV? Well, it'll be, TV will be voting on, if in fact it's ready, we'll be voting on the purchase and sale agreement. And his up and, his and update. we're getting an update. call for a total of about seven minutes. Of right. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm not suggesting that we do it. I, I just so want to get a my clarification. My thought was we'll, we're letting well, the we'll public the know what we're going to be doing. Transcript will be here for that, right? Uh, so they'll, they'll be able to get it. And in then, the actually, no, I'm not able to. But you can get a quick update, though. You can probably guess how we're going to vote on the signing of the. <laughs> you can call. You can call the town administrator. Yes. So I, I don't think we need. Uh, Phil would like. I'm not suggesting it. No. Phil, wouldn't you like to be here Thursday? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're having an executive session. That, that's it. So so don't don't bother tuning in. Okay. Okay. Town administrator's report. Bear with me, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll try to be brief, but it is a lengthy report carried no, over from a couple of meetings. I think we need you to go to the report. Okay, thank you. So at first, I, I attached a copy of a presentation that uh, was made to Secretary Ash during a recent visit uh, to the State House, which was hosted by Representative Brad Jones. Again, we continue to advocate for state assistance and received a favorable response from the Secretary who committed to evaluate potential state funding options with a continued priority on the pump station funding. And there was a packet that we provided him and again, we had a very good meeting. Secondly, just reporting for the community, as the board knows, we closed on the acquisition of 9 Mill Street pursuant to the purchase and sale agreement. The property is being occupied by the previous owner until no later than September 1st of this year. Third, due to a recent resignation in the town of Reading, Health Director Robert Bracey is assisting the town of Reading outside of his work hours for the <coughs> town of North Reading. Our understanding of Reading's need is that they require assistance with plan review, which Mr. Bracey will provide. He'll be compensated directly by the town of Reading. Fourth, requests for the annual report have been circulated. Please see the attached notice. And I know, Mr. Chairman, that Ms. Marlin has spoken with you with regard to the board's report. So thank you for your attention to that. I, I won't repeat myself with number five, but you see there's a schedule put out there with regard to the water beater program. Uh, we did have a discussion during the budget meeting on February 25th, the Saturday budget hearing with Public Works. I won't repeat myself. Uh, I was just glad to see that there's now at least some progress going Certainly. On Similarly, there's a current schedule for the fire station improvement project, which is underway at the fire station. I want to thank Julie for her work with regard to coordinating the subcontractors who are working over there, Andrew for his assistance and guidance, <coughs> Chief Warnock, Deputy Chief Galvin, and Sandra Quinlan for their flexibility, as well as the flexibility of all the uh, department uh, staff at the fire department as we go through this process. Seventh, as the board knows, there have been more, many, there have been Warren article appropriations for improvements to the town hall. These improvements included the existing Room 10, which is Youth Services and Veteran Services, and the existing Human Resources Office. Since the initial funding request, a number of factors have changed, including the addition of a Human Resources Director position and receipt of federal substance abuse grant funding, as well as corresponding staffing. After consultation with all involved departments, we'll be proceeding with the following plan. The renova renovation of Room 10 to house Human Services, Human Resources, excuse me, Youth Services, and a conference room. Each office will have a separate hallway entrance, which was the main goal for the beginning. There's a layout that was attached to the report for reference. The renovated human resources area will now, host, will now house the Veteran Services Office, which would include an office and a conference reception area within the existing footprint and layout. These renovations can be accomplished using appropriated funds for improvements in the town hall as follows. June 2015 capital improvement funds, which were to renovate two town hall offices in the amount of $50,000. October 2016 town buildings article, which funded human resources office and the HVAC in other town hall offices. And unexpended balances from previous town meeting articles for building improvements for which the projects have been completed or were determined to not, be, uh, <coughs> to not need to be completed. A detailed description uh, was attached, and I also want to thank Veterans Agent Susan Magner for her flexibility during this process, Finance Director Liz Rourke, Human Resources Director Bob Collins, DPW Director Andrew Lafferty, and Building Superintendent Julie Knight for their efforts to find the most appropriate solution to the space constraints in this building. Eighth, as of February 23rd, DPW crews had been out for 28 events this season to either treat roads or plow or both. Four of these events warranted calling in contractors to plow. 
We have had approximately 45 and a half inches of measurable snow as of that date. We used approximately 1,700 tons of salt at a total cost of just under $103,000. School department used approximately 82 tons of salt at a cost of $4,900. We used approximately 8,590 8, gallons of calcium chloride for a total cost of $8,933. <coughs> Approximate total costs incurred to date to, on February 23rd. Snow and ice overtime, $87,312. Snow and ice expenses, $230,928. Snow and ice unsubmitted, $35,900 for a total snow and ice cost of $354,140. Under the Municipal modernization, modernization Bill, Snow and Ice Deficit Spending Authorization was modified from the Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee to the Chief Administrative Officer of a town. There's a copy of the general laws that were included, and on February 6th, I authorized deficit spending for snow and ice removal. Number nine, I wish to recognize recent and upcoming transition in a few of the town departments, and bear with me, the list is lengthy but important. First, Helen Gray for her retirement from the, from the Fire Department. Thank Helen for her 17 years of service to the town. She's been succeeded by Sandra Quinlan, who has been training alongside Helen since November. <coughs> and I want to recognize the fire department for their efforts to put on a nice retirement party for Helen at the fire station uh, about six weeks ago. Second, Jacqueline Studley has been appointed to the position of Executive Administrative Assistant for the Department of Public Works. Jacqueline was previously the Administrative Assistant for the Department of Public Works, and we congratulate her. Third, Susan Doherty has retired from her position in the Health Department effective February 28th. Thank Susan for her 25 years of service in the Health Department, which was preceded by four years of full-time and part-time work as a receptionist for Town Hall, Recording Secretary for the Board of Appeals, and the Police Department Secretary. She will be succeeded by Amy Tachara, who has been training intermittently with Susan in recent weeks. Fourth, Mark Meal, clerk for the Department of Elder Affairs, will be retiring from the Senior Center effective June 30th. We thank Mark for his 14 years of service <coughs> to the town. Fifth, I'm pleased to announce that Matthew Cooper has been appointed to the position of IT Director. Mr. Cooper comes to us with 16 years of private and nonprofit systems administrator work. I thank Brian Carter in the IT Department and Liz Rourke, as well as Kevin Farilla from the Town of Reading, for their efforts to ensure that the transition has been smooth. And I thank Bob Collins, Liz, and Kevin for their efforts during the screening and interview process. I also wish to recognize the Chairman, Mr. Masseri, for participating in the screening as well. Mr. Masseri, thank you. Again, congratulations to all. Thank you all for their past and continued service. Tenth, this is a record. <laughs> I am aware of some resident concerns concerning trash and recycling collection over the past few weeks. The DPW director is in the process of scheduling a meeting with our contracted hauler to discuss these issues and to identify solutions. A note for the record, and as was discussed at the budget hearing on February 25th, the hauling contract expires on June 30th, 2018. 11th, pleased to report that Ipswich River Park has been named Best Scenic Place for 2017 by the Reddings Magazine. Thank you to the advocates, particularly Ms. Tatar and Ms. Mullen, who made construction of the park possible, and to Marty Tilton and his guys for their maintenance of the facility. I also want to thank Maureen, Lynn, and Maria, and of course Sheila, who no longer works for the town but is participating in the Parks and Recreation Commission, for their work to ensure that there is something going on at the park for everybody. Thank you also to the committee members who make the programming, especially the summer barbecues, possible. A copy of the article in the Reddings Magazine was attached, and I believe that we've also got uh, on hand, if not today, then tomorrow, copies of the magazine itself for those who may not have seen it. There were some nice pictures that were in there. Does everybody get that magazine? Reddings Magazine? No. no. We'll bring copies to Thursday's oh, meeting. Uh, you know, I, I probably get it because I'm a member of the chamber. I wonder why. That may be why I get it. We'll, we'll bring copies to Thursday's meeting. That would be great. And that concludes my comments. I, I thank you for the board's patience. I would, just, I would just add the success of uh, Ipswich River Park uh, is also from funding from the Hillview Commission mm -hmm. and, and the Hillview Enterprise over the years. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may even add to that, the LUC, who Ken Tarr was the chairman, played a <coughs> tremendous role in uh, uh, beautifying IRP because uh, they, they've been doing programs. I think they do the uh, craft fair now, 
to help raise funds mm. for the bond. So. Okay, old and new business, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, just briefly for those uh, who recently retired, thank them again for their service and uh, all of them, They're very devoted and terrific individuals who serve the community well. And uh, I think the appointments uh, to fill the vacancies are good choices also. So I wish them well in their retirement and wish the uh, newly elevated employees to those positions uh, much success. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. You? Me? Okay. Uh, two things. Um, uh, first of all, I, I did not s receive the warrant articles in the mail. Uh, and so I just asked a few of my neighbors if they got theirs, and they did not. So uh, it's probably, it has nothing to do with your office. It has to probably taxes. do with the Postal Service, but uh, still, I just uh, uh, note a reference in, in that regard. I, I don't Did know. Did you, uh, you guys, you know, move to Wilmington or something? Or? Not this week. <laughs> I, I did get. Did you uh, fill out your census? I did get a warrant. Uh, yeah. Michael, did you get a warrant? I have it right here. Part of it I, I did. Yeah. I received mine at home. Oh. The, it must uh, be. An, it must be an attack in, on the uh, West Village side yeah. of town. I'm sorry. In, in the. Uh, no, I have one. In, no, oh. I picked one up today. But okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I think the TA wants to say something. I'm sorry. We, we do want you to attend. <laughs> 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 yeah. We expect you to be there, right? It's Michael. Yeah, just if there's any detail that you could provide, perhaps after the meeting, in terms of the geographic location, we will follow up with the postmaster. Great. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate that. And <coughs> I, I took this from you, but I thought I had one. Do you mind if I mention this? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Saves me from the <laughs> Well, it's let's toast. the. Uh, uh, it's the end of the winter and the spring to move forward with the night of fun and cheer. Uh, they're going to have the um, uh, wine social on um, Friday, March 31st, at seven, between 7 and 10 p.m. It's going to be held at Teresa's at Hillview, 149 North Street, here in North Reading. The cost per ticket is $45, but if you're really smart and you order your tickets before March 24th, it's only Forty dollars, so you can save some money there. But they're going to have Petucci's Bunratty Tavern, Burton's Grill, China Cuisine, Ginger Gourmet, Horseshoe Grill, Joe Fish, La Casha Bakery and Deli, Lori. Okay, uh, Lori's Nine O Nine on the Border, Red Heat Tavern, Ryer's Store, Teresa's Prime, The Local, The Loft. And Mr. Ronte Pavratti. So again, that's going to be uh, March 31st at uh, Teresa's at the Help You. That's it. Uh, I'll just add, it's a great time. I encourage everyone to attend. Catherine? Just um, to, I think the CPC chairman made a fair point that if. Um, Voters want the bylaw to be adopted regarding the prohibition. It needs a two-thirds two vote at town meeting. So we're voters of the town, and, the and, and we uh, operate at the will of the other voters. So if people are opposed to this, they need to come to the town meeting and vote on it. Um, I know I get, I've been getting calls and in person and things like that, which I'm sure my colleagues are getting as well and got it pertaining to medical marijuana which the town uh, was not opposed to but this is clearly something <coughs> that people do not want sales in the town don't do not want sales of marijuana or marijuana products in the town so they have to go to the town meeting and give give the direction and take a vote on it so that's that's it. That's just my little voting public yeah, service you need announcement. Fifty people in order to transact business too. So. A hundred and fifty town a voters, right? We need a quorum. We need a quorum. Besides us. Besides us, right? And I'm hoping Michael will talk a little more about the need for the quorum. Michael. Mike. I'm sorry. What did you say? Your turn. <laughs> my turn. Well, let's get on to talk about the town meeting, but it is really important. Um, I will just add that. You have to look at the magnitude of how important this town meeting is associated with the sale of this property. 
and how important those funds after we finish the sale partnership model at the state how valuable they will be for us to help us make future capital investments so I hope the town we do get the majority get the 150 registered voters at least to show up and so I plead to all the board of select members to get out on social media get out whenever media you have to reach out to your constituents to have them come to town meeting it's very important I want to <coughs> just congratulate the high school maskers team uh, they put on a show this past weekend at drama fest um, my daughter was actually one of the actors and I'm very proud of her but they were uh, successful in moving on to the next round which will be on March 18th it will be held at Westford Academy at 2 30 p.m. that's Saturday I hope the community goes out and supports the kids. They put on a great show. I was so proud of them. And I, I couldn't believe how good it was. And to see all the different high schools compete against each other like that, they literally bring this set out onto the stage. They get timed. They conduct the play. And then they break down the play, getting judged all along the way. Uh, just a tremendous amount of effort in such a quick amount of time. I think they do it all within about 30, 35 minutes. And uh, so it's worth coming to see. It's $10. I hope the community comes out and continues to support the kids. Um, and a special congratulations to my daughter. She, run, she got an award for excellence in acting, so I was very proud of her for that, too. So congratulations to my daughter, Michaela. Cheerleaders came in first place again this year. They're amazing. Congratulations to the seniors for finishing the, um, on top once again. And our high school hockey team, I believe the game is tomorrow evening. They won the semi-quarterfinal round in double overtime. And so congratulations to them, uh, and I wish them the best tomorrow evening. And that's all I have. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I want to start by uh, uh, thanking the town administrator for all that's going on. It seems like uh, between the health insurance, between getting ready for town meeting, uh, a sale of the Berry property, and everything else is just a tremendous amount of work. <laughs> I know and I appreciate the hours that he's put in to make this successful and I I hope uh, after town meeting you get a little bit of a break and get rid of that cold. Uh, uh, second, uh, again, uh, this special <coughs> town meeting is extremely important. We need a quorum and what's important, Michael <coughs> mentioned, uh, you know, on the sale of the Berry property and the development of uh, senior housing uh, over 55 housing there means capital for the town badly needed and it an additional source of revenue which will have minimal if any impact on our schools it means we're beginning to um, close the systemic problem that we've had with uh, budgets because we'll be having additional revenue that we can apply to our budgets not this year and maybe not 2019 but right after that we'll start to see see the impact of it so this is a very 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 important <coughs> special town meeting we need a quorum and we need your support I would appreciate that uh, I'd like to thank all the board members for the efforts and the special meetings that we've had over the past few weeks it seems like uh, some of us have been living here in town and uh, at town hall uh, trying to get some of these things done. Uh, I also uh, just want to make mention of the passing of Elizabeth uh, Rosenkowski, who uh, was uh, killed in that automobile accident on Route 125 in Andover, where the tree fell down mm. on, the, uh, on her car with her husband. I guess her husband is in the hospital. Very, very sad situation, but it does bring, uh, it does bring Attention, because we've heard, if you've heard on the news, there was another one just the same week in another community. And uh, uh, as I drive down Susan Drive, there's a couple of trees that are hanging over the road. They're actually broken and they're being supported by another, uh, another tree. I'm uh, just waiting for that to you know, fall over. Uh, we, we sent a notice off to the property owner. But uh, my point is this. There's, yeah, if you look around, and you know, both from the town side and also from the public side, uh, take a look at these trees and uh, that are potentially in danger. And 
take some action because uh, someone can get hurt or killed and uh, if it's on your property falling on somebody then you're responsible for it and on the town side and any of the town property where there's that kind of an exposure uh, the spring rolls along we need to pay some attention to it it's one that you drive by every day on Susan. I know, it's, it's be, now that I'm paying attention to it. It's pretty scary. I've been pulling off to the, uh, it, you know, it, it, and that's been like that for a long time. I thought it was actually a town lot, and it's not. No. So, uh, anyway, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 Second.